on. And 2019 is almost coming to an end. It's crazy to believe the decade is almost over. Guys, this is a huge live stream. This is something that I have been building up all year of 2019. We knew the decade was coming to a close soon, and I figured it's time to talk about the best movies of this decade. There are so many great movies that came out this decade. It's incredibly impossible to choose what is the best one. So I had to make this into a live stream slash a tournament bracket game to answer this question. What is the best movie of the decade? And I'm not doing this alone. As you can see right here, I have a bunch of guests right here, a bunch of awesome YouTubers that decided to join this awesome game right here. All their YouTube channel links are in the description below. Definitely go check them out. And one quick thing before we get started, if you guys are new to the channel, feel free to click and like that subscribe button for more reviews, reactions, rankings, and more movie content. And now let's introduce these awesome guests. Our first guest right here is a really great YouTuber who comes from the same area as me in the New England area. She is an awesome YouTuber. That is Alyssa from Mainly Movies. Alyssa, welcome to the channel. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Awesome. And our next YouTuber right here, you definitely know who he is. I love his channel. He does a lot of Blu-ray videos, movie reviews, and just has a lot of passion. He's wearing a Call Me By Your Name shirt. Unfortunately, that's not going to be in the tournament. But uh, Larry, <laughs> what's up, Larry? Hi, Ryan. Uh, I'm glad to be out here. We're in a competitive setting, but I'm not competing this time. So wasn't as much like stress uh, <laughs> on the, the channels, but I'm, I'm glad to be back and I had to, to rep, rep my movie here. Yes. Uh, Larry, thank you so much for being here, man. It's always have, great to have you on the channel. And, of course, our last special guest. You've never seen this guy before. He's just a YouTuber. He talks about movies way too much, does movie reviews, does ranking videos. Uh, his name is Sean Chandler Talks About. Sean, what's up, man? Well, that's the name of my channel. My mother only called me Sean Chandler. But, hey, I'm just so excited <laughs> to be here. And we've got 100 movies to talk about with four of us. So that is talking about movies way too much, which I'm pumped about. Awesome, guys. I am super excited about this. And uh, we have another special guest right here off to the side, off camera, my brother slash editor, who, by the way, please give a shout out to Cody O'Toole in the chat room. He put this whole thing together, set up all these brackets that you see on the bottom of your screens. He did everything. Hmm. All the behind the scenes were Cody. Hi. It's good to be here, guys, because I've probably only seen maybe like 15 of these. Movies. <laughs> so maybe yeah. it's good I'm off to the side. Um, but we do have one other guest who's not here, but... Yes, time. we did have one other guest. As you see by the thumbnail, Jay, one goddamn percent Vader's is on the thumbnail. Unfortunately, Jay could not make it tonight. He felt a little under the weather, got very sick, and so he could not be here. The kid can barely speak. So, Jay, we wish you well, man. Get better. And, uh, yeah, so fortunately, Jay couldn't make it on here. So we have these people right here. Awesome people. Uh, Cody, before we get started explaining everything, you want to address the chat? Yeah, we got a good amount of people in here. I see Mr. Adam Daly down there. I Adam see, Daly. What's up, Adam? I see Daniel Berrios in there. Lots of familiar faces. Logan Battles. Lots of people excited to get this thing going. Awesome. Thank you guys so much for tuning into this. This is going to be a long live stream, hopefully not three plus hours long like the Irishman. But guys, let's talk about this. How are we going to break this down? The best movie of the decade tournament. We picked 100 movies to participate in this tournament. Well, 154 movies. There's 54 honorable mentions that... We'll mention in the description box. If you want to see what the honorable mentions are that didn't make the cut, you can check them in the description box down below. And so what we're going to do, guys, there's 100 movies that we chose in total. And Cody and I, we split those 100 movies, 25 movies into separate brackets. There's four brackets total, 25 movies in each bracket. And each bracket has a number one seed. You will see what the number one seeds are for each bracket really soon. Those movies are put off to the side. They won't play in effect until the last round-ish of each bracket. You'll see how it goes as we go. So 24 movies will be facing off against each other at the start, and then we're going to shorten it to 12 movies. So now 12 movies are facing against each other, and then we'll pick movies, random, random, and then we're down to six movies. And so those six movies will face off against each other, 
and now we're down to three movies. Ryan, we you can't have three movies facing off against each other. So that is where the number one seed movie comes into effect. So now we have four movies left. They'll battle it out, and now we're down to two movies. Those two movies will face off against each other, and whichever wins is the winner of that bracket, and it moves on to the championship round. So then we do that, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Then we're down to four movies, one movie per bracket. Four movies left. They battle against each other. Now we're down to two movies, and – Whichever wins, that will be the film that we have picked as the best movie of the decade. Boom. Does everyone understand the rules? Pretty self-explanatory, right? <laughs> so how this is going to work is um, the panelists that you see right here, me, Larry, Sean, and Alyssa, we are going to pick a movie based on a one-on-one -on -one matchup. And if it's a majority vote, then it moves on to the next round. However, if it is a tie, since there is an even number of people, we need a fifth vote. And that fifth vote is going to be you guys watching the chat. So if we need you guys to come into effect, the chat will decide as the fifth vote. And whichever wins moves on. So, also, there's 100 movies in here. It's probably impossible that people have seen every single movie. If we come to that situation where someone hasn't seen a movie in a specific matchup, then their vote doesn't count. They're out of this round. And then we'll add you guys the chat as the fourth vote. Or if we're in a situation where none of us has seen a specific movie of the panels, we go to you guys the chat to determine the winner. So, yeah, I think I pretty much explained everything, right, Cody? I think we're ready to go. Chat's ready to go. Are you guys ready to go? Uh, Larry, Sean, and Alyssa. Yeah, let's ready. do it. Chat, are you guys ready. ready to go? We need to hear the word ready in the chat if you guys are ready to go. I think they've been doing it for like five minutes. <laughs> I, think I think we're good. Come on, guys. Is everyone ready? Um, Sean Chandler's, Sean Chandler's ready. That all right. I, we're just going to get right into it, not waste your guys' time. So, all right. So, let me get rid of this thingy right here. Boop. Okay. And so, let me go to bracket one. So we are starting off with bracket number one, guys. And the number one seed in this bracket is 2010's The Social Network. Ooh. Now, guys, how we determine this is we went on specific websites like Rotten Tomatoes, IMDb, many professional news movie websites. And we pick the movies specifically that pop up the most in the best movies of the decade. And The Social Network is one of those movies that popped up the most. So the Number one seeds were determined based on how much times those movies popped up in people's top 10 lists. And the social network is our first number one seed in this bracket. So it is out until round four. So let's get right into the first matchup, guys. Our first matchup is 2018's Paddington 2 versus 2013's The Wolf of Wall Street. Okay. Our first person's talking is ladies first, Alyssa. Alyssa. Uh, um, I think I got to go, I know I'm going to get, I'm probably going to be uh, outnumbered on this one, but I think I got to go Paddington 2 on this. Um, I liked Wolf of Wall Street, but not as much as a lot of other people did. And Paddington 2 is a really solid sequel. Okay, Alyssa is going with Paddington 2. All right, uh, Larry. Oh. <laughs> well, this, this might be fun because I... Also, enjoy Wolf of Wall Street. It actually took me a little bit to warm up to Wolf of Wall Street. But I'm also going to vote for Paddington, too. Um, oh, I find it to be pretty much a perfect little family film. Um, so I am going to pick Paddington, too. All right. Larry is also going with Paddington, too. All right, Sean. All right, first off, I think it's hilarious that these two movies are facing off. Something is wholesome yeah. as adding to <laughs> This the isn't the only one. Where Leonardo DiCaprio Ooh. shoots fireworks out of his butt while <laughs> pop up on cocaine. Second thing, I haven't watched either one of these movies in their entirety. Oh. <laughs> oh. So, so um, I can't vote. Yeah, Sean. Either not one. All right, so Sean hasn't seen both of these movies in their entirety, so his vote does not count. So I will go next. Um, I love both of these movies right here. They're, just like Sean says, two completely different movies right here. But for me personally, I'm going The Wolf of Wall Street. Wolf of Wall Street's one of my favorite Scorsese movies. 
absolutely love Leonardo DiCaprio. Jonah Hill gives one of his possibly best performance of his career. Margot Robbie, this gave us Margot Robbie. And that Quaalude scene just does it for me. I love Paddington too. It's such a great family movie, but I got to go Wolf of Wall Street here. And so now we got to go to the chat. We don't need to go to the chat. We don't? Nope. Paddington oh, we don't. We on. don't. Paddington 2 is the clear <laughs> cut winner. But uh, the chat is going to run. Yeah, there is. <laughs> yeah, uh, but uh, what are people saying in the chat regardless? Uh, I mean, a lot Sorry, of, guys. it's a little mix. I'm seeing a good amount of Paddington okay. 2. Uh, Daniel Berrios is saying The Wolf of Wall Street by the smallest margin humanly possible. <laughs> A um, lot of mixed thoughts here, but it seems like Paddington 2. We have two people on the panel saying it. Ryan, you were outnumbered by one, oh, yeah. but we are going to say Paddington 2 is moving okay, on. Okay, so Paddington 2 is the first film that moves on. Somewhere Zach Pope round. just Sorry, Zach yeah. Pope. <laughs> yeah, Zach Pope is going to comment at some point. <laughs> um, anyway, so Paddington 2 moves on. All right, let's go to our next matchup, guys. Um, this seems like a cool matchup right here. The next matchup is... 2016's The Edge of 17 versus 2013's Her. Joaquin Phoenix versus Haley Steinfeld. All right, Larry, we're going to start with you. So I really enjoyed The Edge of 17. I actually think it's a, a solid coming-of-age film. This one's pretty easy for me, though, <laughs> because Her is one of my favorite films of the entire past decade. I love Her, so I, I vote for Her. I think it's great. All right, one vote for her from Larry. All right, Sean. Uh oh, Sean. Uh oh. Uh -oh. oh no. Maybe you got the wrong person because once again, I have not seen either of these movies. Oh wow! Wow, Sean has not seen either of these movies, so Sean is out once again. Uh, so we go to me now. Uh, man, this is tough. I love both of these movies. I think The Edge of 17 is one of the most underrated movies this decade, but I agree with Larry. I'm going with her. It's Joaquin Phoenix, one of his best performances ever. It's so good. Scarlett Johansson is so good as well. Like, it's it's Spike Jones, guys. Her. So, so uh, Alyssa. Um, well, I really enjoy both of the movies. Uh, I think Edge of 17, like Larry said, is a very uh, enjoyable movie, like you said as well. Um, but we got to make it unanimous here. I got to go yeah. with her. All right. Her <laughs> easily moves yeah, yeah. on to the next round with a vote of three votes to nothing. All right. And uh, Cody, what are people saying in the chat? The chat is definitely in agreement with all of you guys. Her gets a good amount of the votes. Uh, some people said they haven't seen any of them. They definitely should see Sean's not alone. <laughs> so there you go. There you hey. go. Her <laughs> is definitely the clear fate. Okay. All right. So her moves on to the next round. All right. Here is our next matchup, guys. And uh, yeah, this is interesting. This is interesting. Oh. So our next matchup is 2016's Your Name versus 2019's Jojo Rabbit. Very interesting. All right. Oh. Sean. All right. I have seen these. Go on, Jojo oh. Rabbit. It's it's pretty exciting that I have actually seen a movie finally. Jojo Rabbit, Taika Waititi doing somehow balancing the drama of World War II and making it funny. Incredible. That the movie works is incredible and it's very good. All right. Sean is going with Jojo Rabbit. I gotta I gotta back out of this one. I have not seen your name, but I have seen Jojo Rabbit. So I got to back out of this one. So Alyssa. Um, so I just recently saw your name a couple days ago in preparation for this. Um, and so I, I really enjoyed that one. I wasn't, I didn't really have much uh, anticipation for it. It sounded kind of silly, but it was very good. Um, but Jojo Rabbit, um, like you said, it has this good balance of uh, kind of the, the comedy and the satire, but also the heart. Uh, and I got to go, uh, got to go with Jojo Rabbit in this one. All right, Alyssa, going with Jojo Rabbit. All right, and uh, Larry. Well, uh, I'll be the the dissenting vote this time around. I think Jojo Rabbit is a solid film, though I guess for my own personal taste, it was a bit sanitized um, for the subject matter. Um, plus, Taika Waititi's 
humor is hit or miss for me personally. Um, and I actually found his Hitler to be the weakest part of the film. Uh, I think that's where his comedy shined through the most. And I was like, eh. Well, I think Your Name is a really transcendent, beautiful film that has a lot of layered messaging throughout on top of really, I mean, stunning, stunning animation. So we all know, or if you know me, you know I am all about that animated life. So I'm gonna gonna stick up for my animation cohort on this one and vote for Your Name. All right, Larry is voting for Your Name. All right, and we don't need to move on once again because Jojo Rabbit is the winner. And on Jojo a... Rabbit is the majority in the chat. The majority so... in the chat. Okay, so Jojo Rabbit moves on to the next round. All right, so now let's get into this next matchup right here. Um, this is also a very interesting matchup. Um, our next matchup is 2011's Moneyball versus 2019's nineteen seventeen. And I'm the first one up, and I got to back out once again because 1917 hasn't even come out in my area yet. It's not coming out until January 10th. Dang it! <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, Alyssa, are you the same? Yes. So, I got to back up on this one. So the chat so these up. two guys have seen it, though. Larry, we'll start with you. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! <laughs> I've seen it. Thankfully, um, y'all are in for quite the treat. I will say that uh, I loved 1917, which is fun because war movies, I don't know, sometimes they're a little bit void for me, but this one just did it. Sam Mendes directed the all living heck out of this film. It is quite an experience with an amazing score. Roger Deakins, I mean, give him a second Oscar because it's <laughs> beautifully yeah. shot. I mean, it, it's really like, I don't know. There's not much, I think, that can be improved upon in 1917. Moneyball, I think, is also really great. It's one of Brad Pitt's maybe more underrated performances because uh, he's he always gives like these really good, understated performances. So <laughs> Moneyball's great, but 1917 is just on a little bit of a different level for me. All right, so Larry is going with 1917. <clears throat> And Sean? Yeah, I mean, I'll mirror everything that he just said. Key word there is 1917 is an experience. Like, it, you haven't experienced anything like this. You want to see it in the theater. Um, it's incredible the way that they're able to make this compelling personal story about these characters. And it's a single take movie. Moneyball, very good movie. But there's a lot of movies like that. There's nothing like 1917. Yeah, I'm a huge Sam Mendes fan. Highly looking forward to 1917. And uh, Cody, what is the chat saying? Uh, so a lot of people are in the same ballpark as you and Alyssa. Haven't been able to see it yet. Yeah. But about the three or four what people that have seen it, they went with 1917. All right. And Sean went with 1917 as well. 1917 is moving on to the next round. All right. All right. Let's go to our next matchup right here. This is also... Very weird uh, decision making. That uh, this is how the matchups came to be. So our next matchup, guys, is 2017's The Big Sick versus <laughs> 2011's X Men First Class. <laughs> Comic book versus rom com. Yeah. All right. So Alyssa, you're gonna start this one off. Oh man, uh, this is a tough one. I I actually <laughs> like both of them. X Men First Class. I was, uh, you know, at that point, the X Men <laughs> franchise had kind of started to take some odd turns, wasn't as great as it uh, started off. And X-Men First Class, I think, really uh, kind of revitalized things. And so I really enjoyed that movie. But then The Big Sick, that was one that uh, came out of nowhere for me personally. Like I had heard people talking about it, but didn't have, uh, again, much uh, kind of anticipation for it. But I really enjoyed it. Um, oh, man. Uh, I guess I got to go with X-Men, I think, on this one. Okay, Alyssa's going with first class on this one. All right, uh, Larry. <laughs> so this is one that's difficult for me <laughs> because I actually, I'm on the like lower end of liking them both <laughs> compared to everybody else. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, the big stick I think is fine, um, but I don't know. I, I guess I just didn't get quite as enamored with it as it seemed most everybody else did. And then X-Men First Class I think is fun, but it's right around like the mid 
middle range of my X-Men film ranking. Um, so but... you're a big X-Men fan. Is it because this one just feels so different from normal I... X-Men? Is that what it is? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think so. that might be it, is that I I, I am an X-Men There's no fan storm. So. <laughs> There's no, yeah, no storm. storm. So we I'm out. I mean, at least they didn't make her make ice cubes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, I am an X-Men fan, boy. So I think that lifts my enjoyment of X-Men First Class just above the big six. I'm going to also go with First Class. All right. Larry's also going with First Class. Uh, Sean? Uh, I'm going to go First Class as well. Um, really enjoy both movies as kind of a nerdy comic book movie kind of guy. X-Men First Class is just more my type of thing. And for me, it just distinguishes itself amongst a genre that's oversaturated with kind of the 60s um, aesthetics of everything and setting. And so just it, it it stands out for me for that reason. Every time I watch it, I'm like, yeah, I, I really dig this one. And, of course, Matthew Vaughn um, – prototype for a bunch of the stuff he went on to do with with kingsman and everything all right sean going with first class as well so first class is the obvious winner but for me personally i'm also going to go with first class i love the big sick i saw it in in actually didn't see it in theaters saw it on blu-ray because everybody was talking about this movie so i had to see it this gave us kumail nanjiani he's in a lot of funny movies now he's in the eternals now a marvel movie in if you see those yeah. pictures of him, he's jacked. Dude, yeah, he is jacked, man. Fortunately, <laughs> he, he wasn't was Men in Black Chris International. <laughs> yeah, full Chris he, Pratt. Yeah. yeah, he was the best in Men in Black International. And uh, But for me, First Class is it's one of my favorite comic book movies of all time. Like, I love this oh. movie. It's Matthew Vaughn. I love everything about it. It's so different than any other X-Men movie. So, yeah, I got to go with First Class because I've seen it the most. Uh, in the chat, what is the chat saying? They're definitely with you guys. First class gets the easy nod. All right, first class is moving on to. The there are some big sick votes though. There are oh, there are some big sick votes. Good, I like the one. <laughs> Mainly just Adam Daly over and over. Yeah, Adam. <laughs> <laughs> Quite a few times. Yeah, Adam is incredibly passionate about the big sick. Um, great movie, but it just didn't move on. All right, let's go to the next matchup. And man, again, totally different tone movies. Our next matchup, guys, is 2019's Marriage Story versus 2012's Looper. Ooh. Ryan Johnson versus Noah Baumbach. All right. So uh, let's start with Larry. Oh, ah, this is a, a tough one for me. Um, I'm going to... I'm just shocking myself. I'm going to say Marriage Story. Um, I just, I think the script was really good. Time travel sci-fi has to get me. I don't know. Something about me with time travel and sci-fi. Outside of maybe <laughs> Avengers Endgame and Edge of Tomorrow. Yeah. Like, style. <laughs> uh, uh, it's a tough style for me. Looper does it very well. I think it does it better than Arrival and in Interstellar. Don't kill me. Um, but it... <laughs> It still didn't quite grab me, so I'm going to go Marriage Story. All right. Mar uh, Larry voted for Marriage Story. Uh, Sean? I couldn't get Marriage Story watched in time. It's actually what I'm watching oh. tonight with my, oh. with my wife oh. for date night, so we make wise choices. Scare <laughs> 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 you tonight. away from that divorce yeah. paper. Huh? Oh, wait for the divorce paper. Don't go that way. <laughs> well, this movie really inspired me, honey. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Sean hasn't seen Marriage Story yet, so okay. Sean is out on this one. So, Alyssa. Um, so, I have seen both of them. Oh, uh, right. Marriage Story was just very recent for me as well, though. Um, and I think that one has some really fantastic acting. Um, and uh, both Adam Driver and Scarlett Johansson were really great in it. Um, but Looper, Looper's got... Uh, just that the time travel sci-fi kind of high concept, kind of uh, very interesting, very good uh, movie for Ryan Johnson coming off of like um, his earlier ones like Brick and you can Breaking Bad, see the, yeah, and, and but 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 his movie two thousand five, yeah, for a movie, yeah, um, and so it like come, kind of see you can see where he's headed with that one, um, and in terms of his career, uh, yeah, so I gotta go yeah. with Looper on this one. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's just go in with Looper. Uh, for me personally, I love both of these movies, two completely different tone movies. You know, Ryan Johnson, like made a new age of sci-fi with time travel. I love Joseph Gordon Lovin and Bruce Willis in it. It's Bruce Willis is like best acted performance in a long time, but um, marriage story was such a different movie. And 
it's so freaking good. I love Adam Driver and Scarlett Johansson in that. Like that argument scene is amazing acting right there. Um, I won't spoil it for Sean, but uh, I'm going to go with Marriage Story here. I think it's Noah Baumbach's great return. It's a personal story for him. And it just had some of the most realistic acting I've seen in a while. It's definitely one of my front runners for Best Picture and one of my favorite films of the year. So I love Looper, but I'm going to go with Marriage Story here. All, All right. right. So that's 2 1. And then the chat here, it was back and forth. I saw a oh, lot mixed. of Looper. I saw a lot of Marriage Story. But I think, I think by maybe one or two, Marriage Story gets the edge. Oh. Marriage Story? Marriage Story. Gets All right. Edge. Marriage Story is the one that comes out on top. Very divisive things in the chat. Uh, Chandler is in here. What's up, Chandler? He asked, what streaming platform am I using? I'm using StreamYard, Chandler. StreamYard. Um, it was really close, though. Like It's like it's like right here. No. Right here? Yeah, yeah. So Marriage Story is moving on yeah, to the next I think next I saw a round. little bit more Marriage Story. Yeah. Both great movies, though. Um, all right. Let's go to the next matchup. I don't know how we did these matchups, but uh, <laughs> that's, how, that's how they pan. Yeah, out. just how they pan out. Um, our next matchup, guys, is 2014's The Babadook versus 2012's Wreck It Ralph. <laughs> yeah, d animation, uh, Disney versus a scary monster. All right, so uh, Sean, go with Wreck It Ralph. Um, just such a great. Disney animated film. Great concept. Love that they were able to get the cameos and the cameos work. They fit inside of it. It's sweet. It's heartfelt. It's funny. It's all the things that I want family entertainment to be. All right. Sean is going with Wreck-It Ralph. I'm up next. Um, very different movies. I love Wreck-It Ralph. Guys, I love Wreck-It Ralph. It's one of my favorite Disney revival age movies. I think it's the most rewatchable one out of all of them. I just love rewatching this movie constantly. But I'm going to go The Babadook. Uh, the Babadook is quite possibly one of my favorite horror movies this decade. It's so good. Essie Davis's performance is incredibly underrated in that. She gives one of the best acted performances this decade from an actress. It feels a lot like hereditary in its tones, but it's something completely different. Doesn't focus on jump scares. And Jennifer Kent, the seriously, needs she needs more work. And as she did The Nightingale, I haven't seen that yet. But uh, The Babadook, I got to go with that one. I think that's an incredible movie. Uh, Alyssa. So very interesting matchup, like you said. Um, <laughs> and as as much as I like Wreck It Ralph, I think I got to go with Ryan here and say the Babadook um, mm -hmm. because that one uh, it takes such an interesting uh, approach to kind of uh, showing us how people deal with grief uh, and putting it yeah. in, in kind of a horror movie context. Um, definitely one of the more irritating child performances <laughs> of uh, recent memory to me, at least. But um, I I got to go with Babadook here. All right, another vote for Babadook from Alyssa. All right, Larry? Oh, my gosh. This is like, okay, this is probably the hardest one for me personally that we've done so far because <laughs> I really love both of these films. Uh, they both tackle such deeper issues than you just get on the surface um, with uh, in just such different ways. So I'm going to... Uh, this is a little bit of a cop out, but I'm going to let the chat decide their first one and I'm going to vote for Wreck It Ralph then. Wow. <laughs> wow. It's a Wreck It Ralph. Tie. Larry's going with Wreck It Ralph. So All now right. we got to go to the chat, guys. All right. Um, Another close one. Another close one. But I'm seeing like 11 6, maybe 11 7. With the edge to wreck it, Ralph. Wow. Wreck it, Ralph comes up taut. It wrecks this matchup right here and moves on to the next <laughs> round. Sorry, Boba Duck uh, fans. No. Uh, love the Boba Duck. It was, yeah. Yeah, it was very yeah, close I'm race in the chat. 11 7, 11 8. 11 8, like yeah, very close matchup. Uh, anybody pop in here? No? Okay. Um, no? All right. Let's keep it going. All right, let's go to the next matchup, guys. Our next matchup is 2010's The King's Speech versus 2019's Ford v. Ferrari. James Mangold. Yeah. All right, so let's start with Sean. 
just go Ford versus Ferrari. I just love that movie. Like I'm the target audience. Uh, quirk, weird, quirky people teaming up to try and achieve greatness with exciting car action. Um, you know, actors I enjoy. It's it's just it, I'm the I'm the target. Dad votes for the dad movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's exactly what just happened. Yeah, um, I'm with Sean. I'm going Ford v Ferrari. Ford versus Ferrari is so freaking good. James Mangold continues to make great movies after great movies. And the King's Speech, it's really good. Not better, but it's it's a Best Picture winner. So it's from Tom Hooper, the guy who did uh, Cats. But uh but Ford v Ferrari just meant so much to me. Christian Bale and Matt Damon were so great in that movie. It should get some love at the Oscars. But uh, yeah, Ford versus Ferrari for me. Uh, Alyssa. Uh, also got to go with Ford v Ferrari. Um, I think it, uh, you know, even though I'm not really a big car person, uh, it really uh, manages to take that story and make it interesting and kind of broadly appealing to people. It has some really great uh, racing sequences, uh, some very interesting shots that you don't, normally see in racing movies um king speech is good but ford v ferrari for me all right and the majority has voted ford v ferrari's moving on larry <laughs> yeah i was just making fun of sean earlier because i love ford v ferrari it's actually <laughs> one of my favorite films of the year um i think it is a technical just master class in yeah. Every technical aspect is amazing. Um, the acting performances are so good. And I also think it has like a really nice script with the friendship that develops. The King's Speech, I think the script is by far the best part of that film. The acting is also very solid, but uh, Ford v. Ferrari just is quite a bit better in my books. Yeah, and Christian Bale's getting some love with some certain award shows. That's definitely good to see. Um, the chat, Cody. People oh, yeah, they're with majority. you guys, Ford v. Ferrari. A couple of King's speeches thrown in there, but very, very high majority goes to Ford v. Ferrari. All right, and Ford v. Ferrari is the easy move on right here. Here's a matchup that makes sense, this one. Now, this is a matchup that makes sense. Uh, it's Disney versus Pixar. Uh, 2017's Coco versus 2010's Tangled. Woo! <laughs> All right. Uh, I'll start this one off since it's my turn next. Uh, uh, I love both these movies. I really do. Um, choosing between the... This is the first toughest matchup by far. Um, I love both these movies for different reasons. But for the, the person I was, which was a musician, a percussionist, the messages hit a little harder for me with Coco. So I'm going to go with Coco on this one. I It made me cry a lot. Um, I love Miguel. Hector is an underrated Pixar character. Mama Coco, my goodness. And Tangled's really good, too. I love Tangled. It's one of my favorite Revival Age Disney movies. Zachary Levi's great. It's just, it's, it has one of the best villains as well with Mother Gothel. And, but for me personally, Coco hit a little harder for me. So Coco is my pick. Uh, Alyssa? Uh, this is a tough one. Um, I really enjoy both of them. I've definitely seen Tangled more times than I've seen Coco, but I mean, the, the length of time it's been out has definitely influenced that. Um, and it's, oh, this is hard. Um, I think I got to go Coco as well. Um, Pixar just has a way of bringing you something kind of visually and kind of mentally stimulating, but also has that emotion to it. And Tangled has some emotion in there as well, but I think Coco really brings that to a, you know, to a higher level. So got to go with Coco. All right. Alyssa's going with Coco. Um, Larry. What kind of little Latino boy would I be if I vote against Coco? I mean, come on. But <laughs> obviously <laughs> it struck a, a nice chord with me as well, with the heritage, and also being a musician back in my day. I'm like an old crotchety man now. Um, but you also played quite different instruments, but all of the messages just rang true in Coco. I think it has a little bit more heart. It just has more depth to me, and that animation is is just breathtakingly beautiful. Tangled's fun, but it's definitely Coco in my book. All right. And Coco is the majority vote. Uh, Sean. Well, since I don't have to make a hard choice here, I'll just go with Tangled to play devil's advocate. Um, this is the one I've watched with my kids 
an enormous number of times. It's a classic Disney tale, except with a modern spin, especially in the way that they did the music for it. So this one I've had a lot of fun with. I also took my kids to go see Coco, and that was also an amazing time. So, um, But I'll go with Tangled just so yeah, it can be different. <laughs> and because right, it doesn't uh, matter. Sean went with Tangled just to hey, be different. Hey, there you go. And uh, the chat, what are people saying in the chat, Cody? I'm I sure saw a lot more Coco, a little bit of Tangled sprinkled in there, mm -hmm. but uh, they want you guys to sing Remember Me, like together. But I don't, remember <laughs> me. I don't think we have time for that. But, but uh, if you me. heard me sing, you would. You don't want to, yeah, you don't want to hear yeah. that. <laughs> uh, yeah, it would be bad. Um, okay, so Coco moves on to the next round. All right. Now, our next matchup here is very different. Very different. Um, our next matchup, guys, is 2018's Black Panther Wakanda Forever versus 2015's X Machina. Sci-fi versus Wakanda. <laughs> <laughs> What's up? What's up? Um, uh, I... I got to go with Ex Machina here. Um, I think this one has uh, a very, uh, very interesting story, very different um, way of approaching things. Uh, Black Panther is good and, and uh, I enjoy it, but not as much as um, most people do, I think. Um, so definitely Ex Machina for me. All right. Alyssa is going with Ex Machina. Um, Larry? Uh, this is another tough one for me. <laughs> I really, <laughs> really love both of these films. Love Oscar Isaac and Alicia Vikander. So them together in Ex Machina was everything I needed. Plus Oscar Isaac just period in Ex Machina was so good. Poe um, Dameron <laughs> and General Hux. Okay, I mean, there you go. Uh, I'm going to... I'm going to go Black Panther just by a smidge. I just think it brings everything together. It really kind of brought a breath of fresh air into the MCU for where it was um, and just has its own distinct style. And I, it's, what, it's in my top five of the MCU films. So I, I'm going to go Black Panther. All right. Larry's making it interesting going Black Panther. Um, Sean. I haven't seen Ek Mach, you know, uh, even though I own it. I have not seen it. Oh. All right. Sean owns Ex Machina, but he hasn't seen it. Uh, all right. I'll definitely watch Ex Machina because I – now, these movies are really good. I love Black Panther, Wakanda Forever. I have the action figures right over there. Um, many people assume because I'm an MCU fan I'm going to go with Black Panther, but I'm actually not. I'm going with Ex Machina. Ex Machina is one of my favorite sci-fi movies this decade. Um, it's it, it introduces a lot of great ideas about just human. It, it, it just has a great story to it. And Lisa Vikander, Oscar Isaac, Donald Gleason, the cast is really great. Alex Garland, great director. And it's a different movie. And Black Panther had a lot of politics in it. And Killmonger, awesome villain, but... For me personally, Ex Machina made me think a lot after watching it, and I just wanted to watch it again, again, again. Wasn't a fan of Annihilation, but Ex Machina for me was the better film, so I'm going Ex Machina. So two and one, two to one. Um, two what is to the chat one saying here? Yeah, a another mixed one for sure. Here it started off strong for Black Panther, but I think towards the end, Ex Machina started to take over. So I think. By the very slightest, Ex Machina is going to move on. All right. Ex Machina coming in with the sneak up win. And that moves on to the next round. Ex Machina. Um, all right. Let's get on to the next matchup here. The last two matchups of the first bracket. The penultimate one. Our next matchup is, again, extremely different. Um, the next matchup, guys, is 2015 Spotlight Best Picture winner. Versus 2014's Edge of Tomorrow or Live Die Repeat. Um, Larry. All right. Um, I really appreciate Spotlight for bringing what it did to the forefront. Uh, it was clearly <laughs> a story to be told, and the script is great, the acting is great. Uh, I'm going to go Edge of Tomorrow, though. I just had a great time every time <coughs> I've ever watched the film. Um, it's one of, as I said before earlier, it's one of the best time travel-y 
Groundhog Day films that's been done. Great acting. The effects and the practical effects particularly are just stunning. So, yeah, I'm going to vote Edge of Tomorrow. All right. Larry's going Edge of Tomorrow. Uh, Sean? Yeah, I mean, I'll mirror all that. Spotlight, I mean, it's, it's solid Oscar bait. It's not bad, but it's just one of those movies that just feels like they're going for the Oscars, whereas Edge of Tomorrow was just such a pleasant surprise. It was so much better than it looked. It For being a movie that repeats itself, it's very easy to rewatch it. Um, I mean, it's like just so fun. It has heartfelt moments. It's just a great little blockbuster that unfortunately kind of underperformed at the box office. I'm definitely going Edge of Tomorrow. All right. Sean's going with Edge of Tomorrow. And uh, Spotlight is a very good movie. It's technically the better made movie in terms of Oscar bait, like Sean said. I'm never going to watch it again, but Edge of Tomorrow. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Edge of Tomorrow, though, it's a great movie. Excellent. It takes the Groundhog Day concept, spins it on its own head, does something creative with that film genre. And Tom Cruise plays against type. He plays a coward in this movie. And we get introduced to Emily Blunt's character, who is awesome. And it's just excellent. I love the Groundhog Day aspects. The action in it is awesome. And Bill Paxton was great in it. So I'm going Edge of Tomorrow. Uh, Alyssa? So uh got to mirror what all three of you guys said. Uh, I think Spotlight was a good movie, uh, an important movie to bring those, um, you know, issues and occurrences to light. Uh, but Edge of Tomorrow is definitely the, the more enjoyable, I guess, and, and rewatchable movie. Uh, it has, you know, it takes things that are familiar, like you said, the Groundhog Day aspect, time travel, but uses them in a very creative way. Um, so Edge of Tomorrow for me as well. All right, and Edge of Tomorrow easily moves on. And uh, what is the chat saying, Cody? They're definitely agreeing with you guys. Uh, <laughs> most of it is going towards Edge of Tomorrow. Some people said Spotlight is boring, and a lot of people were pointing to Sean's point about it being an Oscar Beatty type movie. Being Me? What Spotlight <laughs> is. So, so uh, yeah, so Edge of Tomorrow easily moves on. Sorry, Spotlight. Um, okay, guys, let's go to the final matchup in the first round. I hate. I love both of these movies. I hate this matchup already. Um, <laughs> and it, they're two completely different movies. 2016's Kubo and the Two Strings Woo! versus 2014's Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. Apes versus another monkey. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Sean, let's start with you. I haven't seen any Leica films. <gasps> <laughs> Zero. Just as this, this Not even the one I the came out this year. No. And I own Missing um, Link. It's right over there. Sean, this is why we don't get a lot of Leica movies. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, it's their marketing department. That's the problem here. They don't sell their movies very well because everyone that's seen them says they're great. You're the trailers always, make you go, yeah. what? You're always talking about traumatizing yeah. your children. Grab them and put Coraline on immediately <laughs> for like a family-friendly yeah. traumatization moment. Yeah. All right. So Sean hasn't seen any Leica movie. So Sean is wow. out for this matchup. Wow. Um, two completely different movies. Um, I did a review with Sean for Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. You can go check that out. Um, I'm going with Dawn of the Planet of the Apes for this one. I think that's one of my favorite movies of the decade. It's an excellent movie. It's everything I love in sequels. Matt Reeves came in and directed the heck out of this sequel. I love the Planet of the Apes trilogy in particular. It's one of the best trilogies of all time. It it brings Caesar to a whole other level. It brings him as a leader now. He's a gritty leader. And Andy Serkis, the motion capture, is the best of all time in terms of motion capture. And we get a great villain, Koba, awesome villain, played by Toby Kebbell. Has a lot of great politics. I thought Gary Ullman's really good in this movie. And I love Kubo. It's... My favorite Leica movie. I love Co Kubo and the Two Strings. It's an excellent movie. Great animation. But I got to go with Dawn of the Planet of the Apes for this one. Uh, Alyssa? Um, this is an, an odd matchup, like you said. Uh, Leica films are... Uh, really interesting and very creative. It's awesome seeing, um, you know, stop stop motion animation, um, especially on the big screen. Uh, but uh, Kubo is 
probably one of my least favorite Leica movies. I really enjoy it. So, I mean, Leica, all their movies are very good. Uh, so even the, the worst of them for me is still a great one. Um, but I think I got to go with uh, Planet of the Apes as well. Um, I really enjoy, like you said, the whole, the whole trilogy here. Um, I think it's got some really interesting uh, ideas. And like I said, bringing Caesar to kind of that leadership role uh, takes the takes the franchise in, in a great direction. So, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. All right. Lissa is also going with Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. Larry? Well, this one is definitely tough. Dawn is my favorite of the Planet of the Apes trilogy. Uh, mine too. Uh, I think it's really strong. I would probably just barely give the edge to Kubo and the Two Strings. I just think it is an absolutely just stunning film. It's one of my favorite animated films of this entire decade. I mean, the animation really just blows me away. Plus, I think the story is so sophisticated <clears throat> for family-friendly affair, uh, this dealing with melancholy. I, don't, I just think it's a, a nearly perfectly crafted film. So I would, I would give the edge just to Kubo, but Don is so great that, I mean, it's a win-win here. All right, Larry's going with Kubo All in right. the two strings. All right. All right, All right. making this very interesting. Uh, chat, what's uh, going on, Cody? There's definitely some love for Kubo and the two strings out there, but I think there's just a tad bit more love for, for Caesar. the apes together strong. It's like a two or three boat separation, but Dawn of the Planet of the Apes gets the slight. Edge. All right, apes together strong moves on. <laughs> Don moves on to the next round. It's kind of sad crossing off Kubo, though. It's sad. Hurt. I love that movie. <laughs> it kind of hurts so yeah. much. All right. And, um, guys, that's the end of round one for this bracket. Now Cody is going to take over announcing yep. the round two match. Yep. I couldn't make these next cards because I didn't know which movies would face what. So I'm just going to say them and uh, from here until we finish this <clears throat> All bracket. Right. All right. Here we go. Round two. Starting it off. Paddington 2 versus her. Paddington 2 versus her. Mm. All right, who should start this one off? Uh, I'll start this one off. Um, very tough matchup, very tough matchup, but I'm going to go with her once again. Uh, Joaquin Phoenix, excellent performance, like I said. Uh, Paddington 2, really sweet, charming movie. You can see why it has the 100% on Rotten Tomatoes, but uh, in terms of impact, acting, direction, I'm going to go with her on this one. <clears throat> um, Melissa? Uh, I gotta agree with you there on this one, Ryan. Uh, definitely going with her. Paddington Two is a great movie, um, but her kind of is just at a different level. Um, and you know, you gotta be in different moods for the two movies. But <laughs> I like <Yeah>. her. <laughs> All right, Alyssa, going with her. Larry. Yep, I am also going with her. I think it is a pretty phenomenal movie. Um, and as much as I love Paddington Two as well, it just her her is one of the the greats for me when it comes to 2010 decade. So, all right, Sean doesn't count. Uh, the chat. What are people saying? <laughs> Lots of love uh, for both. Um, I am seeing a little bit more her though. Seeing a okay, bit okay. So her is the majority vote, and her is the one that moves on. All right, next matchup in round two. We have Jojo Rabbit versus 1917. Two 2019 mm. movies going at it. You count on this one, Jojo Sean. Rabbit versus <laughs> Yep. All right, so we're going to go right to Larry. Um. Yeah, I'm going to vote for 1917. <laughs> I, I just think it's, across the Whoa, board, I think it's a better film, except for acting, maybe. Uh, everything else, I think, uh, it's just it's a little bit better. All right. Larry's going with 1917. Sean? 1917. Um, I had a few problems with Jojo Rabbit, some things that didn't quite work. Um, 1917 is just phenomenal. All right. I feel a little uh, bit bad because we're going to probably push this pretty far. <laughs> And you two are just like, hey. yep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's the chat saying, Cody? Most people haven't seen 1917. So, so um, <laughs> they're, they're going with Jojo Rabbit. What did Sean go with? 1917. They're going with Jojo Rabbit. Okay, so 1917 is the majority vote. So 1917 moves on to the next round. All right. It's going to get interesting, Alyssa. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, so what's the next matchup? Next matchup here, we have X-Men First Class versus Marriage Story. Wow. <laughs> um, uh, Alyssa? Um, Got to go First Class here easily for me. 
since I didn't vote for Marriage Story the first time. <laughs> um, but uh, again, I really, I, I appreciate Marriage Story more than I enjoyed it. Uh, the, the subject matter isn't something I really like all that much, but the acting and kind of the technical aspects were great. But First Class is the, the far more enjoyable movie for me. Okay, uh, one for uh, First Class from Melissa. Uh, Larry? I'm also going to vote for X-Men First Class, just by a hair. The marriage Story, right. it's really solid, great aspects, but I'm going First Class. All right, Larry's going with First Class. Sean hasn't seen Marriage Story. Um, I've been watching it on my phone while we've been doing <laughs> but I didn't get it finished in time. This is sponsored by Sean's <laughs> phone. <laughs> um, anyway, so for me, I, I'm also going to go with First Class because I've seen Marriage Story once. Um, so I'm going to go with First Class here uh, with the chat. Seeing a good amount at First Class and X-Men's uh, with maybe one or two Marriage Stories. All right, so X-Men First Class once again wins over marriage story and is moving on to the next round all right what's the next matchup cody next matchup in round two wreck it ralph versus ford v ferrari wow i'm gonna wreck it uh <laughs> ralph versus ford v ferrari. wow larry oh my start? gosh uh <laughs> <laughs> this is a tough one again oh my gosh wow uh, Ooh. I don't know. I just I love Wreck-It Ralph so much. Um, it's just not maybe not as quite as fresh in my like love bank as Ford v Ferrari, but this year I'm going to vote Ford v Ferrari. Barely, yeah. Ford v Ferrari. No ounce of confidence. <laughs> no ounce of confidence. Yeah, <laughs> it's moving on for no ounce of confidence. Mm. All right, uh, Larry is going with Wreck-It Ralph. Or did you? Oh, oh Ford v Ferrari. Sorry, Ferrari. Ford v Ferrari. Uh, Sean, and this is tough because both sides of uh, these are both dad movies. One you watch with your kids, and one with dad's <laughs> life. And so I'm gonna go with uh, the one for me. I'm gonna go Ford versus Ferrari. Both, but I mean, I I think both are great. But Ford versus Ferrari is kind of on that that next level that actually appeals right to me. <laughs> All right, uh, Sean's going Ford v Ferrari. Um. Yeah, I'm going to go with Ford v. Ferrari. It hit me emotionally. The performances are powerful. Wreck-It Ralph, I love it, but uh, i got to go with Ford v. Ferrari. Uh, Alyssa? Uh, agreeing with all three of you guys. Uh, <laughs> Ford v. Ferrari for me. Wreck-It Ralph is fun, but uh, I think this is the, the better movie. Okay. Uh, in the chat? The uh, I see most Ford v. Ferraris, but Wreck-It Ralph had a fight in there. It gave oh, a little Okay, shot. put it some uh, but, uh, <laughs> uh, U4 clean swept it. So Ford v Ferrari. All right, Ford v Ferrari races to the finish line for this matchup. Um, what's the next one, Cody? Second to last one in round two, we have Coco versus Ex Machina. Coco oh. versus Ex Machina. Um, oh wait, Sean. Uh, Hasn't seen X. Hey, you haven't seen X Machina. All right, so I'm gonna start this one. Coco and X Machina. Man, this is tough. I'm gonna go X Machina. <laughs> uh, I I I love X Machina. It's so freaking good. But I don't know. I, I gotta go with X Machina just a smidge. Uh, Alyssa. This is really hard. These are two movies that are very different, but I would probably hold them at just about the same level for me. Uh, so this is like, you know, toss up between them. Uh, I guess I'll probably go, I'll go Coco to put the uh, the pressure on Larry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So he has to make the decision. Because um, they are both good. Like these, if I could, if I could, they would go both go on. All right. Know. Unless yeah. they're going with Coco. Ooh. Uh, Larry. It's definitely, obviously, this is going to get tougher as it goes along. <laughs> it's like, oh, my God. Yeah, I, I'm scared. <laughs> um, I'm going to vote for Coco. I'm going to give it to Coco. Okay. Coco. He's going with Coco. Uh, and I'm seeing more in the, chat. in the chat, too. More Coco in the chat. All right. Oh, so Coco wow. is the one that is moving on. Very cool to see that. Uh, we got 80 people watching the stream. Thank you guys yeah. so much for watching nice. this stream. Woo! Um, appreciate it. Appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah, woo! <laughs> uh, um, Cody, what's the next matchup? Well, it's the final matchup here in round two, and that's going to be Edge of Tomorrow mm -hmm. versus Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. Uh, Battle of the 2014 movies. Edge of uh, Tomorrow, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. Um, let's start with uh, Sean. 
Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm going to go Dawn. Um, that's tough, though. I, 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 Edge is more rewatchable for me. But Don, I think what they did in kind of bringing a real sense of tragedy in the way the story's structured, in that um, there's there you end up with a clear villain, but it's more about building conflict about different opposing values as opposed to just someone being a mustache twirling villain. You understand where Koba's coming <coughs> from, even as he gets villainous. I there's something special about that movie for me, though there is with Edge of Tomorrow too. But I'll go Don. Yeah, I'm also going Dawn. It, it's one of my favorite movies of all time. I love that movie. Uh, Alyssa? Another really tough matchup. I um, think I got to gotta go a little different from you guys and say Edge of Tomorrow here. Um, I really enjoy that one. I really like uh, the way that the story goes. And also, I think it's very creative, very interesting with um, kind of the time travel elements. Uh, so... Both really great movies, though. This definitely getting hard <laughs> towards the end here. But Edge Very of hard. Uh, all right, Alyssa's going with Edge of Tomorrow. Uh, Larry? I'm going to have to go with Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. Uh, okay. It just holds a little bit more emotional hips for me, and that usually will kind of push things <laughs> over the edge. So, um, you know, and Caesar still going strong. Still going strong. Is it going strong with the chat, Cody? I think Edge of Tomorrow might have had the edge in the chat. I wow. Think. I think <laughs> so. Might have had the slightest edge, but they were sided with Alyssa, <clears throat> but Dawn did get more votes. Apes still are going strong as Dawn of the Planet of the Apes moves on to the next round. Is that the end of uh, round that two? That is the end of round two. All we right. have six movies left. In six this. movies left in this bracket. Still in bracket one. Okay. <laughs> We're still in bracket one. <laughs> Let's move on. After Here an we hour. Go. We have Her versus 1917. Again, uh, Sean and Larry. Uh, wait, wait. Uh, so Sean hasn't seen Her. And, is what? it just Larry voting? Is it just Larry voting? Might be the only one. Larry. <laughs> Hi everybody. <laughs> um this one is definitely a tough choice. Again, everybody in the chat, once 1917 is released, I implore you to go watch it in a movie theater because this is what the theatrical experience is all about. So don't wait for this one to come out on Blu-ray. I'll double that. That's don't true. Eat it. Experience is the key word. Like mm -hmm. immersive, yeah, you are there in the trenches yeah. <laughs> like you've never seen before. However, uh, uh, I just mentioned that emotion wins out for me. Just a touch, and I'm gonna have to vote for her on this one. Oh, so, okay. her, um, it just—I don't know—it was something really special. It really like got <laughs> it. even upon rewatch. It just is one that kind of transcends. So. Oh, I love 1917. I applaud it for so many things. It just came up against one of one of my fave faves. So her. All right, Larry's going with her. Oh, so nice. now let's go to the chat. This the is going to be her. The chat is with Larry. They're going with her. <laughs> <I haven't seen laughs> her. <1917 yet. laughs> All right, her is moving on to the championship. Nope. Well, sorry, the final round. Second of, to last. Second to last round. Penultimate round of round one. Brackets. All Next right. matchup, Ford v. Ferrari versus Coco. Uh, Ford v. Ferrari versus Coco. <laughs> Ford v. Ferrari versus all this animation. <laughs> um, I'll start this one off. Um, 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 uh, I'm gonna go with Coco here. Uh, I've seen it the most times. Love Ford v. Ferrari. I've only seen it once, unfortunately. I need to see it again. But uh, for me, I got to go with Mama Coco. Uh, Alyssa. Uh, got to go with Coco as well. I really mm -hmm. enjoyed Ford v. Ferrari, but Coco uh, has uh, more of an emotional heft, Larry. Um, and, uh, uh, just the animation's great. And again, I've seen it more times as well. I've only seen Ford v. Ferrari once, so Coco. All right, Coco for Alyssa. Uh, Larry. Oh, this is another hard one. <laughs> I know that's all I'm going to be saying from now on. It's going to be uh, a constant saying. <laughs> I think I'm also going to have to vote for Coco just by a smidge. Oh, I love Ford v. Ferrari, but I'm voting Coco. 
All Sean right. Is exasperated over there. Uh, Sean, <laughs> this is an easy one. Uh, Ford versus Ferrari. I'll let you guys re vote, recast your votes, and <laughs> give the right answer. Uh, <laughs> it's Ford versus Ferrari. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Larry went with Coco, and Sean went with Ford v. Ferrari. Uh, what's the chat saying? Uh, I'm seeing a lot more Coco than Ford v. Ferrari, though it is pretty close. <laughs> <laughs> though it is pretty close, though. Yeah. <laughs> Sean is playing. Um, so, Coco is moving on yes. to the championship, right? Nope. To the we final see. match. To the final four, it's moving final on. Final four, all right. And let's see one of these. Which one of these movies will make the final four? Dawn of the Planet of the Apes Ooh. versus X Men First Class. Dawn of the Planet of the Apes versus X Men First Class. All right, Matt. Apes versus X Men. <laughs> Alyssa. Um, gotta go with X Men. I haven't voted for. Well, I vote for Apes in the first round, but uh, I like it. I like them both, but I gotta go with First Class here. All right, Alyssa's going with first class. Uh, Larry. Uh, this one is a little bit easier. The easiest matchup in a while for me. Um, I have to vote for Dawn of the Planet of the Apes on this one. All right, Larry's going with Dawn. Sean. Go right. Dawn again. Uh, Dawn as well. Um, yeah, pretty easy vote for me. Even as much as I love first class, I just really do think Dawn is that kind of a next level blockbuster. Apes. Together, strong. <laughs> I'm going Dawn of the Planet of the Apes as well. Love you, First Class. I love First Class, but Dawn of the Planet of the Apes for me, it's a masterpiece. Um, what's the chat saying? What's the vote? I don't know. What oh, sorry. Was. Sean voted for Dawn. Larry voted for Dawn. Alyssa voted for First Class. All right. I think I'm seeing more First Class. Eh, no, I'm lying. Dawn. I'm seeing more Dawn. More Dawn. All right. <laughs> Dawn of the Planet of the Apes goes to the final four of this bracket. And is that the last matchup of round three? That is the last matchup of this round, yes. Okay, guys, so three movies have moved on. And like I said before, three movies can't go up against each other. So we got to add in our number one seed, which once again is The Social Network. 2010's The Social Network. And it comes in right now. Are we ready? Yep. Are you guys ready? Yes. We have The Social Network versus Her. Ah! The Social Network versus her. Who's starting here? <laughs> Sean. Sean, since you're doing this, wait, have you? Wait, have you? Oh, you I've been watching it? it on my phone. I keep doing this. I got this four movies some... going. <laughs> <laughs> so Sean is out for this one. Okay. Um, have you seen Social Network, Sean? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah, all right. Um, I'll start this one off. Um. I'm going The Social Network. The Social Network, such a great movie. Uh, Jesse Eisenberg is one of his best performances as Mark Zuckerberg. The Facebook concept. Uh, David Fincher directed this. It's excellent. This easily should have won Best Picture in 2010 over The King's Speech. Much better movie. Much better acted movie. It's introduced the concept of Facebook and Mark Zuckerberg. Very controversial person. He could be likable and not likable. And her... I love you, her, but for me personally, I got to go with the social network. Uh, Alyssa. Uh, really tough matchup. I like both of them a lot. Um, I think I got to go with social network as well, though. Um, I think it's uh, an interesting story. I think the um, characterization of <laughs> Zuckerberg is interesting. I really enjoy the score, uh, Trent Reznor's uh, score yes, for the social network. Yeah. Um, so I love her, but got to go with social network. All right, uh, Alyssa voted for the social network. Uh, Larry? Yeah, uh, so I have this series going called Rotten Tomatoes Got It Wrong. And for my 2010s, one of my picks was the social network. Uh, I am just, I know <laughs> the tomatoes are going to start flying. I'm not the biggest fan of the social network. So this one easily is her for me, but. <laughs> Okay, so Larry's going what? with her. You're not supposed to criticize <laughs> David know. Fincher on the internet. <laughs> it's not allowed. All right, Larry's going with her, but uh, what's the chat saying? I'm seeing a ton more social network. They're okay. happy to see it finally back in the tournament, and uh, it's easily moving on. All right, the social network moves is on to the moving final on two. to the final two. Uh, the last matchup of this round. Coco versus... Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. Apes versus Pixar. Um, uh, Alyssa? 
Uh, I'll keep the uh, trend here going. I'll go with Coco. <laughs> like I've already said, said a lot about both of them. So Coco, but I enjoy both a lot. Mm, Poco Loco. Uh, Alyssa's going with Coco. Okay. Larry. Uh, I'm going to vote for Coco. Coco. Two votes for Coco. Wow. Sean. Don, purely vindictive <laughs> against Coco. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. This is messed up. Uh, I, I just never been as much on the Coco train, but clearly I'm on the Don train. Very much so. Pixar fans, don't kill me and Sean, but apes, apes together, strong. Still well, I'm pretty sure Sean. us apes fans can take the Pixar <laughs> fan. And I want to see that happen. <laughs> <laughs> um, like I'm going crying. with Don the Planet of the Apes. I love you, Coco, but I'm going Don. Uh, what's the chat right. saying? This is divisive. Hang on, I gotta count. <laughs> oh three, my god, four, this is the first five, toughest matchup. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh my nine. god, this is so divisive. I think. Oh, I think Dawn gets the slight edge. I think wow, Dawn gets Dawn. the ever, ever so slight edge. Yeah. Like it's like 15, 16, <laughs> 7, eh, eh, it's, Dawn. Yeah. it's Dawn. It's Dawn. Yeah, I'm looking through this chat. It is so <laughs> divisive. Um Wow. Hey, uh, the chat board's not Dawn. working. Well, I got an error that you've been sending too right. many messages. Take a break and try again. What just happened? <laughs> all right. Dawn of the Planet of the Apes moves on against the social network. That's the, the final two. The, the final social two. network versus Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. Which film's making the final four? Um, who's starting this? Larry, what's starting like, with you? You can start with me because this is an easy choice. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> I vote for Don of the Planet of the Apes. Uh, All right. So Larry easily votes for Don. Uh, Sean. Um, I think I think I'll safely go with Don of the Planet of the Apes. Social Network is a movie that uh, you know I think I've only watched one time, and I was like, that was interesting. I really enjoyed that. It was very well made. But it's not a movie I've wanted to like re-explore. Even in that genre, like the Steve Jobs movie is more interesting to re-explore to me than the social network. And it's not a criticism of it, but once again, I just think Don is just a really great blockbuster that does special stuff. All right, Sean's going Don. Um, I love the social network. I've also seen it once like Sean. Um, great movie. David Fincher introduced a great concept to it. Very unique. Madonna, of the planet of the apes for yes. me. Apes come together <laughs> once again. <laughs> Woo! Uh, Alyssa? Uh, well, my vote doesn't matter. So, uh, <laughs> I guess I should I mix it up and say Don? Um, <laughs> uh, so I go with social network here, but I really like, I feel like I'm like hating on Don. Like, I love this movie. Like, I yeah. Really enjoy oh, we're hearing you loud and clear. We're, we're hearing you. <laughs> <everything. laughs> All right, yeah. Alyssa is going with Social Network. Uh, Cody, what's the chat saying? I got the majority saying Don, but people are still voting for Coco. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, don't know. I can't accept this movie not being in. <laughs> All right, Don the Planet of the Apes is Wins the winner of bracket number one. It is moving on to the final championship round. Let's keep this moving. All right, bracket <laughs> number one is done. We're an hour and seven minutes in. Um, <laughs> All right, let's go to bracket number two, guys. Bracket number two. Now you know how this goes. So the number one seed film in this bracket, I'm happy with this choice, Whiplash, 2014's Whiplash. That moves on automatically. So let's get to bracket two, guys. Our first matchup in this bracket oh boy. is two comic book movies. Oh, boy. We, we got go. 2018 Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse versus 2019's Joker. Woo! All right, Woo! Sony versus Joaquin Phoenix. Let's start with Alyssa. Oh, man. Uh, I really don't know on this one. <laughs> um, I, uh, I think I got to give the edge to... Joker here, um, but Spider-Man, oh, Spider-Verse was very good. Uh, it's just, I don't think I enjoyed it quite as much as other people did. I think it was great. The animation was amazing. I think it had a great story. It was really interesting. Um, but Joker, I mean, Joaquin Phoenix's performance was awesome. And <coughs> I think it was just such an interesting uh, way to go about that kind of movie, right? Because you could have taken that as 
uh, kind of the comic book ish movie that it is, but you could have taken that story right out and just like removed, you know, Batman and the name, the Joker, and it still would have worked as a very interesting look at kind of psychological issues and, and traumas. And uh, uh, I gotta go with Joker. All right. Alyssa's going with Joker. All right, Larry. Uh, so I think Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse is like a pretty much perfectly crafted animated film that really pushed an entire medium forward um, in terms of like innovation. And again, I love me some animation. Joker, I enjoy a lot of it. I also have a lot of problems with it that I don't have uh, on the other end. So I have to go with Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. All right, uh, Sean. Oh, Larry went with Spider Verse. Okay. Oh man, that's brutal. Uh, because it's two <laughs> comic book movies that aren't like other comic book movies, okay. and they're in totally different ways. One just leans so heavily into what you can do with animation that you can't really do with live action, and then the Joker is just so different in that it's not like an action movie; it's a psychological thriller. So. Um, and then it's also tough because I've seen one of them once and I've seen one of them a zillion times with my kids. So, <laughs> and then when I, when I took my kids to the Joker, people kept giving me weird looks. Um, uh, I think I'm going to go Joker. I, but reluctantly, I don't, I don't know if I would stand by that when I rewatch it, but first impressions, I'll go with Joker just cause it, I thought it did some really neat things. It had some things to say. So, um, and it worked for me. All right. Sean is Sean is not confidently going with Joker. Uh, so Sean goes with Joker. Um, I love both of these movies for two completely different reasons. Uh, Joker was a very controversial movie. Uh, Todd Phillips got nominated for a Golden Globe. How is it going to do with the Oscars? I love Joaquin Phoenix and Joker. He was so good. Definitely a front runner next to Adam Driver for Best Actor. Um, in terms of rewatchability, though, Spider-Verse, I've seen 10 plus times. I love Spider-Verse. I'm going with Spider-Verse here to keep it interesting, <laughs> to keep it to a tie. Oh. I think Spider-Verse is one of my favorite uh, comic book movies this decade. I love Miles Morales as a character. I love the animation. It brought a unique taste to Spider-Man. We've get, gotten introduced to characters we've never seen before, and we're getting a sequel now because of it, and so... I'm going with Spider-Verse. All right, we're at a tie. So, Cody, what's the chat saying? Uh, you know, I definitely love for both films, but I'm seeing a lot more DC than Marvel. Wow. So Joker is moving on. All right, and the clown gets the last laugh, and Joker is moving on to the next round. Wow. Spider-Verse was like, besides Whiplash, was number two, and it's already out. Yeah. Wow. That, that kind of disappoints me. Uh, I love Joker. Um, all right, so let's go to the next matchup here. Um, we got 2013's Dallas Buyers Club versus 2012's Moonrise Kingdom. Uh, Larry. Oh, this one is an interesting one. Um, Matthew McConaughey and Jared Leto are both fantastic in Dallas Buyers Club. Um, obviously, it's another film where the subject matter needed to be told. It's a really great story. <coughs> I am going to vote for Moonrise Kingdom, though. I just think it's one of Wes Anderson's like top films. It is Wes Anderson <laughs> being Wes Anderson like to the max. It's so heartfelt. Um, yeah, I got to go Moonrise. All right, Larry's going with Moonrise Kingdom. Uh, Sean. Uh, these came out when I had my first child. So I only <laughs> went to the movies to go see film starring Chris Evans, Robert uh, <laughs> Jr., Christian Bale, and Henry Cavill during that time period. All right. So Sean has not seen either of them. Wow, so, okay. And I got to join Sean because I have not seen Dallas Buyers Club. Oh, but I know. have seen uh, Moonrise Kingdom. So I can't count for this one. Uh, Alyssa. Um. Two very different movies. Uh, I, hmm, I think I, I probably got to go with Dallas Buyers Club. Uh, Moonrise Kingdom wasn't really. Uh, I got to disagree with Larry on this. I don't think it's one of his <laughs> his uh, kind of upper tier uh -huh. movies. I, I enjoyed it, but 
uh, I didn't get the same that I got out of it from as I do from his other movies. Um, Dallas Buyers Club was very interesting, and the, the performances were great. Um, so let's let's leave it up to the chat. We'll I'll go with yeah. Dallas Buyers. All Club. right, <laughs> uh, let's just go on with Dallas Buyers Club. All right, so we're out of tie, so we got to go to the chat. All right, looking at the chat here, someone voted twice. Don't do that. <laughs> yeah, don't vote twice, guys. <laughs> we see you. We see you. Uh, very few people are voting on this one. Oh, well, well no, you just voted three times. Uh, Moonrise Kingdom famine. gets the edge. Moonrise what? Kingdom. Moonrise yes. Kingdom gets the edge. So okay. Moonrise Kingdom moves on to the next round. Wes Anderson. All right, so the next matchup, guys, is – uh, 2019's Book Smart versus 2018's Green Book. Book versus book. Uh, <laughs> Sean. Um, I'm not super invested in this one, but I would go Green Book. I'm just not a big fan of the high schoolers get to the party, do drugs, and bang each other genre. Even when they're well-crafted, it's just not my thing. <laughs> like I just watch it, and I'm like, I, I can't relate to this at all. And so Green Book, I'm not over the moon about that one, but at least I could uh, resonate a little bit more with what it was going for. All right. Sean is going with Green Book. Um, I love both of these movies. I love Book Smart. Incredible directed uh, film from Olivia Wilde, her director of debut. But I'm going with Green Book. Green Book's one of my favorite films last year. I love Viggo Mortensen and Mahershala Ali. They're great together, and it's a feel-good movie. I felt the feels more with Green Book, so I gotta go with Green Book on this one. Uh, Alyssa? Um, well, in this book matchup, I think I gotta go with Green Book as well. Stick with uh, the, the consensus so far here. I really enjoyed that one. I know that recently it seems to be getting a little bit more hate than it did at the time when it came out, but um, I, I like it. Booksmart was good too, um, but I kinda side with Sean here where I didn't really connect, I didn't really relate to um, that movie, uh, and you know, that type of film, you really need to have some sort of connection to, to really, you know, feel super strongly about it, I think. Um, so Green Book for me. It got Mahershal Ali, the role of Blade. Uh, <laughs> Larry? Yeah, I'm definitely one of those that has a little bit of a complicated mm -hmm. relationship with Green Book. Um, in comparison to Book Smart, I just think was a lot of fun and is one of my favorite comedies of the year for sure. So I'm, I would go Book Smart. All right, um, Larry is going with Book Smart. Okay. Book Smart. Um, so it's two. Is it a tie? No, no. it's Green Book. Green Book. Three one Green. Three book. one Green Book. Yep. Uh, what's the chat saying? Chat is going with Green Book as well, but there is some love for Olivia Wilde out there. All right, Green Book moves on to the next round in this book matchup. Our next matchup, guys, is very interesting. We got another Apes movie in here, 2017's War for the Planet of the Apes versus 2016's The Nice Guys. Shane Black versus Matt Reeves. Um, let's start with me on this one. Um, I love both of these movies for two different reasons. The Nice Guys is a great uh, comedy out there by Shane Black. I'm going to go with War for the Planet of the Apes on this one. I think the Apes trilogy as a whole is near for me it's my type of movies Andy Serkis it's a great conclusion to this trilogy Matt Reeves directing it and it has a great villain Woody Harrelson is actually a great villain as the colonel he has a lot of backstory behind him the backstory with him and his son is super heartbreaking and a lot of people hate on it because there's not enough guns uh, boom 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 it's a dark dramatic story that works for what the film is titled so Love nice guys. Love you, nice guys. But I'm going war for the plan of the apes. Uh, what's up? Um, so probably going to be surprising people here, but war for the plan of the apes. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I like all of them. Um, but, uh, I, I really enjoy that one. But the nice guys is a great movie, too. I think it's very, very underrated. I don't think... Uh, enough people have seen it, um, at least from what I've gotten uh, a sense of. And so I really enjoy that movie, but got to go for uh, War for the Planet of the Apes here. All right. Alyssa's also going with War for the Planet of the Apes. Uh, sure. Larry? Apes? So I think I'm, I'm going to go a little bit backward from what I said last time. War for the Planet of the Apes is definitely the one that got me more emotionally, um, especially that ending. 
I don't know what it is. I just love the nice guys <laughs> so much. <laughs> um, I'm going to vote for the nice guys. All right, Larry's going with the nice guys, oh, Ryan right, Gosling right. and Russell Crowe. Uh, Sean? Uh, I'm going to go war. Uh, maybe I had nice guys overhyped to me, and I watched it in a weird mood, but it just didn't – I know all these people saying how wow-inducing it was, and that just wasn't my experience with it. Uh, obviously, I'm a big fan of Dawn, so I thought War was a very solid follow-up. Not as good, but solid follow-up. And I love the score specifically for War. All right, and Sean is going with War for the Planet of the Apes. So the majority say War, but uh, what's the chat saying? The chat is in the majority as well. War for the Planet of the Apes is – but a lot of people are saying the nice guys is super underrated. It is super underrated. Definitely watch it if you haven't yet. Shane Black. Um, but <laughs> – the w apes come together once again. War for the Planet of the Apes. Can the apes win zone. three out of the four brackets? Can the apes dominate once again in this bracket? We'll find out. All right, uh, guys, our next bracket right here is the Battle of the 2011 Movies. We've got 2011's Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 2 versus 2011's ah. Warrior. Ooh. Tom Hardy versus Harry Potter. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, Alyssa. Um... I think I got to go with Warrior on this one. Um, I like the Harry Potter uh, franchise, but the, the later movies just don't really do it for me. Um, and I mean, that was the case with the books, too. I didn't really enjoy the later books as much. Um, I think it's a nice kind of wrap up to the whole story, right? Like a decade or so of uh, movies coming out. But I, I got to go with Warrior. I think that one had a solid story. Uh, kind of an interesting thing that you don't really see um, on on screen that much um, with the kind of uh, MMA stuff, uh, and so Warrior for me. All right, Alyssa's going with Warrior. Ooh, um, Larry. <laughs> so this is the first time I have to bow out because I've not Ooh. seen Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part Two. I know. Interesting. What? That, that shocks me. Wow. I've only seen the first three Harry Potter films. <laughs> Interesting. Wow, that's interesting. Uh, Larry hasn't seen Deathly Hallows Part 2. I thought so. Larry was going to see all the movies. Yeah. Uh, he I said know. there was one, right? Uh, <laughs> there was one. All right, so Larry is backed out of this matchup okay, right okay. here. Uh, Sean? Uh, this is like the easiest <laughs> one we've had yet. A uh, uh, warrior all day, every day. Uh, that's the movie when people ask me, hey, what's an underrated movie I need to check out? The answer is always warrior. Um, if they haven't seen it, just tell them to go watch that one. I'm not a big Harry Potter person. Hmm. Deathly Hallows Part Two, solid Harry Potter movie, but Warrior, that's my type of movie, and it's done with excellence. It out Rocky's Rocky. Um, it's a movie just more people need to go see. Uh, I love Warrior. I absolutely love Warrior. Tom Hardy, Joel Edgerton, such a depressing movie. So good. But for me, I'm going Deathly Hallows Part 2 because it was my favorite movie 2011. Um, I'm a big Harry Potter fan. I love the movies. I love the franchise. And I think Deathly Hallows Part 2 was that Avengers endgame for the series. It wrapped it up perfectly in a perfect bow and tie. And it gave me everything I wanted as a fan of the franchise. It's my favorite Harry Potter movie. So I'm going Deathly Hallows Part 2. But the majority is to Warrior. But the chat will determine this one. Oh, this one's really close. Really, really close. The chat's mentioning how much Sean loves Warrior. Oh, I think. Oh, boy. I'm seeing a little more Deathly Hallows. A oh. little bit, which would make it a tie. Oh, yeah, so boy. Doesn't, doesn't Warrior mm. just win based on the three votes? That's what Sean was thinking. Mm. Yeah. It's making it a tie. I think there's a little bit more love. Alyssa and Sean. Said what? Alyssa said uh, Warrior. Sean, Sean said, Warrior. said Warrior. Larry hasn't seen Deathly Hallows. Well, we're going to stick with you guys. So Warrior's So Warrior on. is moving on just based on the panel here. So Warrior moves on tie. to the next round. Let's call Jay. <laughs> Let's call Jay. There's no Jay. need to call Jay. The right movie Harry was picked. Potter. Um, I think Ryan misspoke when he said uh, <laughs> Deathly Hallows Part 2. <laughs> um, all right, guys. Let's go to the next matchup right here. This is an interesting matchup. We got 2013's Fruitvale Station versus 2015's Sicario. 
Yeah, uh, Ryan Coogler versus Denis Villeneuve. So we're going to start with Sean here. Haven't seen Fruitvale, unfortunately. Ah, uh, you're missing out. Uh, it's a I great hate, movie. I, um, I know. I know. Um, okay, so Sean hasn't seen Fruitvale Station, so he's out of this one. Um, I love both of these movies. Um, I'm going to go with Sicario because I think Sicario was a really – intense movie from start to finish and Denis Villeneuve's one of my favorite directors. I love Emily Blunt in that movie. She was so great. Benicio Del Toro is so excellent. And Josh Brolin, it led to a sequel, which was a good sequel, not better than the first one. It, it introduced the world of Mexican drug cartels. It It's dark. It's serious. It goes there. Like, it really goes there. I love Fruitvale Station, though. It's Ryan Coogler's first big film. Michael B. Jordan gives one of his best performances. And it's a tragic, true story of what happens in that subway. But in terms of, like, rewatchability, even though they're not rewatchable films, but I'm going to go with Sicario by Just a Sludge. Uh, Alyssa? Um, I think they're both great films. Uh, I agree with that. Um, I think... Uh, Fruitvale Station was one that surprised me. I didn't uh, really think I was going to like it as much just based on kind of, you know, the, you know, reading a blurb about it, but that was really good. Um, I definitely recommend people see that if they haven't seen it, um, but I got to give the edge to Sicario here as well. All right. Alyssa is also going with Sicario. Uh, Larry. It's like battle of the, the intensities here, both really like kind of intense <laughs> films. It's like, films. oh my gosh. Um, Michael B. Jordan is so good in Fruitvale Station. And yeah, Ryan Coogler really directs a powerful film. But I'm also going to have to go with Sicario. I think it does ramp up the tension so well in that movie to like... <laughs> A, a like deafening vice grip um, by by the time we get to the climax of the movie. So yeah, just not overall, but not, I mean not by a lot overall. But I'm going with Sicario. All right, the majority of us pick Sicario. Uh, Cody, what is the chat saying? Definitely looks like the chat is with you guys. Majority is heading towards Sicario. All right, and Sicario moves on to the next round in this battle of intensities. Our next matchup, guys, is this matchup right here. We got 2010's True Grit, the remake, and 2017's Blade Runner 2049. Another Denis Villeneuve movie. Um, all right, we're going to start with... Uh, I'll start this one off. Why not? Um, this is easy for me. I'm going Blade Runner 2049. It's my favorite movie of 2017. Uh in terms of sequels, this is everything I love in a sequel. It's my favorite Denis Villeneuve movie. Not a fan of the first Blade Runner. Then I watched Blade Runner 2049, and it's miles better. Ryan Gosling's great. Harrison Ford gives his best performance in a while. And Ana de Armas and Mackenzie Davis introduces us to both of them. And it's got a great villain. And it, it presents a world of sci-fi as well as society, what it could look like in the future. Says some of the best sound effects in a while. And Roger Deakins, 1917, this won him his first Oscar. So easily, Blade Runner 2049. Uh, Alyssa. Um, this one's also an easy one for me, but I'm going to counter you here and say true <laughs> grit. Um, oh. I, I think um, I... I appreciate Blade Runner um, 2049. I think the cinematography is awesome. Like I said, Roger Deakin is great here. The performances are fine, but the story just does not captivate me at all. Um, I'm with you, Ryan, on the fact that I'm not a huge fan of the original Blade Runner either. Um, but uh, True Grit, uh, I am a fan of that one's so original, <laughs> the uh, 60s um, uh, original of True Grit. But I I don't know. Blade Runner just doesn't captivate me. So I got to go with True Grit here. Oh, hey. Okay. I'm having a little uh, lagging issues on my side. Are you guys here? I am yep. here. We're here. Hello? Hey. All hey. right. Um, okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, Larry, uh, Alyssa went with True Grit. Uh, Alyssa, so did you go is... with True Grit? Yeah, True Grit. I know. Yep, yeah, True Grit. So this is a, a pretty easy one for me as well. <laughs> 
uh, westerns are hard for me to get into. Uh, Truka is great. It's a really All solid right. western. It just isn't really my my jam. It's not really for me. Blade Runner 2049, I think, is spectacular. It's another technical feat kind of film. Plus, I think Ryan Gosling gives a really underrated performance for what it was. Um, so Blade Runner 2049. It was one of my favorite films of 2017. And it's, a, it's an easy choice for me on this one. All right. Larry's going with Blade Runner. Uh, Sean. Yeah, I'll kind of mirror a little bit of what Mr. O'Toole said in that I'm not a big fan of the original Blade Runner, and I really enjoyed this one. I think it does what the first one was trying to do, just does it a lot better and explores the themes, the production, the design, all fantastic. So I'm going to go for it. All right. <laughs> the majority is picked Blade Runner 2049. And what about the chat, Cody? So about three or four true gets. Everyone else is 2049. All right. 2049 cruises through to the next round. All right. Guys, let's go to our next matchup right here. And huh, this is going to be interesting. So we got 2019's Avengers Endgame versus 2016's La La Land. Ooh. Musicals versus the MCU. Uh, so we're going to start with uh, Alyssa. Um, I think I got to go end game here. Um, I know that's probably going to be the... I'm assuming it's going to be the popular opinion, but I, uh, <laughs> I, I don't know. I enjoyed La La Land, but it didn't... Um, it wasn't. It didn't really do it for me. I'm not a huge musical person, um, but I, I thought it approached the musical in an interesting way. Performances were great, so I liked La La Land. But um, Avengers Endgame. I mean, we don't really need to. There's nothing that can be said about that that hasn't been said already, right? By a million people. Um, it's kind of the uh, the ultimate, you know, ending for that um, that series of films are almost ending, right? Because we had. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, Far from home after, but end game uh, for me. All right, Larry. Yeah, so particularly I love how La La Land ends. Oh, end game. Um, I think it really solidified how I felt about the movie overall. I don't know that I think the singing and dancing are like maybe up to like classic musical level or even some of the newer musicals with the big productions and that's really kind of deterred me on la la land just a little bit um i know plenty of people who actually and at least one who fervently hates it uh and she has made her case a lot to me so i don't know if maybe she rubbed off on me with a little bit of the negative side as well i still really enjoy the film overall but I have to go with Avengers Endgame. Uh, I was given a near impossible task um, that Rise of Skywalker wasn't able to quite mm. live up to just yeah. recently, but Endgame nailed its impossible task of landing this huge series in pretty near perfect fashion. So I'm going to go with Endgame. All right, Larry's also going with Endgame, and Sean, I know what you're going with. <laughs> yeah, like both of them said, I'm going with La La Land. Um, agree. <laughs> Probably should win this whole thing. Uh, yeah, I mean, La La Land was good. There's some great things about it. I'm not really the target mm -hmm. audience. There's certain things about it that just felt very Hollywood making a movie to pat themselves on the back, which that, that a lot sometimes that stuff doesn't rub. Um, I, don't, I don't always resonate the best with some of that, but very well. I mean, I liked it. I, I give it a very positive view, but Endgame is Endgame and um, did some pretty incredible things to be able to pull that much stuff together and pull it off. And like you get to the end of it and you're like, you earned that ending. That's incredible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm also going Endgame. Uh, La La Land's really good. Really good musical by Damien Chazelle. Ryan Gosling and Emma Stone, they dance really well. They have great chemistry. But you're not going to beat uh, Captain America holding Thor's hammer, insane Avengers Assemble, and Thanos as well. Yeah, I'm going Endgame. <laughs> you can tell by the background. <laughs> um, so Avengers Endgame easily for this uh, panel. But uh, what's the chat saying? Cody? Not for the chat. They're going La La Land. Wow. Oh, wow. wow. La La Sorry, chat. <laughs> Sorry, chat. What? <laughs> so Avengers Endgame is it was close, though. Is, is, is very close. Is moving on to the next round. Battles. Um, all right, let's go to the next matchup right here. We got 2018's oh. Black Klansman versus 2014's Gone Girl. Spike Lee versus David Fincher. 
So we're going to start with Sean. Um, I'll go Gone Girl. I think just a great little David Fincher thriller with a twist I didn't see coming. My wife had read the book before we watched it. So just even the experience of watching it with her doing it, like her, the response was just a really cool one. So just a great addition to that genre. Black Klansman, I feel, is like 85% fantastic. And then there's a 15% where he's, uh, he stopped um, sending his message through storytelling and just wanted to preach at the audience. And I just don't think that it did. It, I think it undermined the other 85% a little bit for me, but still a great movie where, but with Gone Girl, I just didn't have any of those big issues with it. All right. Sean's going with Gone Girl on this one. Uh, I love both of these movies, man. They're so good. Good. Uh, but I'm also going to go with Gone Girl. I think Rosamund Pike seriously gives one of the best female performances this decade. She is terrifying in this movie. You will not want to get married after seeing this movie. David Fincher created an excellent movie. I love, I know, I've I, been checking my house every night before I go to bed to make sure <laughs> there's no secret diaries or plans anywhere. You just never know. <laughs> but uh, Black Klansman, though, is excellent. Uh, John David Washington was excellent in that. And Adam Driver, it's it's such a great movie. If you haven't seen Black Klansman, definitely watch it. But I think Gone Girl is the better movie and the most hard-hitting movie, though, and terrifying. So I'm going with Gone Girl. Uh, Alyssa? I uh, got to echo what both of you guys said about these two movies. I think uh, Gone Girl uh, provides us a very interesting uh, kind of thriller and a story that uh, I didn't see coming, um, some of those twists. Uh, I haven't read the book, so I'd be interested to see how it compares. Um, but I, I really enjoyed that one. Black Klansman I like too. Um, but I agree with uh, Sean that it does get a little preachy at points. There's some kind of like newsreel montage footage that kind of comes out of nowhere, especially the closing, which I think was just that the story itself could have presented that information, didn't need to go that right. extra step to kind of try and hammer it home. I think it was uh, effective on right. its own. So it kind of. Yeah, that's, it, that's it my thing is that it worked without needing the extra to like, see, this is what I'm saying. Did you get what I was saying? Like, <laughs> I did. I did. It worked. Yeah. All right. So well, Alyssa, Gone Girl. Alyssa's also going with Gone Girl. Uh, Larry, are you going with the majority? <laughs> well, I actually am not going to go with the majority. Oh. I do love Gone Girl. Gone Girl gave us bat peen. So there was that too. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> man. Um, and Rosamund Pike is great. I just, I, I loved Black Klansman. I definitely think it's not so subtle. Uh, I can certainly agree with that. But it is Spike Lee, and if there is something Spike Lee has never been, uh, it's subtle. <laughs> I feel like it was just like peak Spike Lee. It's not, it's not quite do the right thing level amazingness or even Malcolm X, but it was a return to form for him as a director, and I thought, I thought it was just really well done. All right, Larry's going with Black Klansmen, but uh, Cody, what's the chat saying? The chat is with the majority taking Gone Girl to move All on. All right, Gone Girl moves on to the next round over Black Klansmen. All right, let's go to the next matchup, and my goodness. It's not going to get easier. <laughs> this is the toughest matchup by far. Another 2014 battle, Nightcrawler versus Captain America the Winter Soldier. Ooh. <laughs> and I got to start this one. <laughs> oh, great. Uh, uh, um, I got to go with, I, I love Winter Soldier. I absolutely love, love Winter Soldier and Nightcrawler. I got to go with the one I've seen the most times, though. I got to go Winter Soldier here. Ooh. I love Nightcrawler. I love Nightcrawler, but I've only seen it twice. So Jake Gyllenhaal is so good in that movie, but I got to go Winter Soldier. It's an excellent movie for me. Uh, Alyssa? This is a really hard one. Um, uh, I'm, I'm with you on the fact that I really love both of these movies. Um, Winter Soldier is one of my favorite MCU films. Uh, Nightcrawler, I think, is a fantastic movie, a very interesting story, nothing that you've seen before um and it's just 
but I mean, I, I'm in the same boat as you where I've seen Winter Soldier far more times. And so if they were both like equally fresh in my mind, I, it might be easier to pick. But this is, oh, I think I got to go Winter Soldier too. But oh, this complete toss up, like either one uh, should have moved on. So Winter Soldier, but barely. All right. Alyssa's also going Winter Soldier. Um, Larry. Yeah, so I enjoy Winter Soldier. I, I never quite loved it like the majority seemed to. I don't know. I'm like, I guess I'm one of those shields who likes a lot of superness in the superheroes. <laughs> and I absolutely adore Nightcrawler. It was in competition for my favorite film of 2014. Jake Gyllenhaal deserved better Academy and every other award show out there. Um, I love it. So my vote is for Nightcrawler. Let me get this straight. You trashed David Fincher and Winter Soldier in this live stream. The oh. internet does not allow you to do that. There's no nuance the in it. You hate David Fincher and the Winter Soldier. Outrageous. Um, no, Winter Soldier's just no. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm back. Hang on. So oh. Larry picked uh, Nightcrawler, Nightcrawler. Okay. and Sean picked My Little Pony. <laughs> Uh, yeah, if I hadn't started talking and I was just going off on some sort of rabbit trail because I knew you disappeared and I wanted to fill the void so you didn't miss anything. Um, <laughs> that's totally what happened. So um, I, I will echo what Mr. O'Toole said and uh, um, in the, that it's a movie that Nightcrawler is one that was very cool and I just haven't rewatched it. I was like, oh man, that is a cool movie. That is a fantastic performance. And obviously there's more to it than just rewatchability, but we're not talking about Schindler's list where I don't rewatch Schindler's list. Cause I don't want to watch the Holocaust. Like it's a cool <laughs> thriller that I love. Like I will sing its praise, but it's also not one that I go back to. And you're contrasting it with uh, just a very interesting, unique comic book movie in a genre that we get a ton of output these days for it. It's one that kind of stands out and did something unique with it. So uh, easy Winter Soldier. All right. Sean going Winter Soldier as well. McCody, and My Little Pony. And My Little Pony. Uh, okay. What's the chat saying? I don't see any My Little Pony, but I do see <laughs> the majority going to Winter Soldier. Wow. I'm sure Nightcrawler fans are already disliking this video. Yeah, yeah. So Winter Soldier. I'm disliking it. I voted for it. Winter Soldier. <laughs> Cap <laughs> Captain America comes through to beat Jake Gyllenhaal. I love you, Jake Gyllenhaal. It's just how the votes go. Um, so, guys, let's go to the next matchup right here. Uh, very different movies. We got 2016's Manchester by the Sea versus 2012's The Dark Knight Rises. Batman versus Casey Affleck. All right, uh, Alyssa. Um, this is one that one, – one of these movies, I think, is superior in terms of filmmaking, and one is – uh, an easier watch, I guess. Um, so I think from a technical standpoint and a story standpoint and everything, I think Manchester by the Sea is fantastic and a really uh, emotional and very um, kind of poignant. But I think The Dark Knight Rises is one that is a lot easier to watch. Um, we were talking about on the, the previous matchup, right? Like having movies that you can kind of go back to or ones that you've seen and you kind of are okay with not seeing them again, despite how great they are. Um, and I think that's kind of what it's falling to for this one for me. So I think I gotta go Dark Knight Rises, even though I would say it's my least favorite of the uh, that trilogy. I do enjoy it, but uh, I like the other two movies better. Um, but All night. right, so Alyssa is going with Dark Knight Rises. All right, uh, Larry. Sean, cover your ears. I'm about to vote against Christopher Nolan too, uh, <laughs> because The Dark Knight Rises is okay. I don't know. I'm what? Just, I don't love it. <laughs> uh, I agree with Alyssa that it is the weakest of the Nolan Batman trilogy. Obviously. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean it's good. It's just I don't know. It was it was quite the the letdown after the Dark Knight for me. So I'm gonna vote for Manchester by the Sea. All right, uh, Larry's going with Manchester by the Sea. Okay, uh, Sean. As much as I love a good lighthearted family comedy, I haven't seen <laughs> Manchester by the Sea. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Uh, Sean hasn't seen Manchester. <laughs> so it comes down to me. I love both these movies, guys. I seen Manchester once. 
it it made me depressed after watching it. Uh, Casey Affleck is excellent in that movie. It gave us Lucas Hedges. He's in many movies now because of this. Um, it's depressing. It's a one watch movie. It's a Massachusetts movie. So I could be biased and go with Manchester, <laughs> but I'm also going to go with the dark Knight rises. Uh, I think it's an excellent film in the dark Knight trilogy. It's, I agree. It's the weakest because dark Knight is incredible and Batman begins, but I think it's an excellent conclusion to the dark Knight trilogy. Christopher Nolan knocked it out of the park. So I'm going to go with dark Knight rises. Um, if there's a Nolan movie, especially Batman one, that you're going to go against. I, I'm not going to hold going against Dark Knight Rises. Against you. <laughs> it's, it's not the Ooh. same as your betrayal Ooh. in those previous rounds. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, what's the chat saying? Besides someone saying Sean's about to punch his monitor, uh, <laughs> it looks like majority is going Dark Knight Rises, but uh, a lot of people are bringing up the point that uh, Manchester hit people more emotionally, but it's only a one-time watch. So all right. that's why they went with Dark Knight Rises. Rises. All right, so Dark Knight Rises. Batman, the Cape Crusader comes out on top. Final matchup in round one. Final matchup in this oh. second bracket, guys. We got 2015's It Follows versus 2012's Django Unchained. So we're going to start with Alyssa. Um, This one, while I enjoy both movies, this one's an easy pick for me. Uh, Got to go with Django. Uh, it's one of my favorite or one of my top uh, Tarantino movies. And although I enjoyed it follows, it was kind of underwhelming for me. And it might have been it been hyped up a bit too much for me. I didn't see it in theaters. I only caught it uh, once it was out on Blu-ray. Uh, and it has some interesting ideas. But but Django has the performances, has that kind of classic Tarantino intensity balanced with comedy, balanced with like kind of stuff that you wouldn't expect to, oh, I hit my mic, sorry. Uh, stuff that you wouldn't expect to see uh, in um, in a movie like that. So uh, Django Unchained for me. All right, Alyssa going with Tarantino. Um, Larry. Yeah, I'm also going to go with Django Unchained. I loved it. So that was great. <laughs> uh, Tarantino definitely delivers a lot in this film. And while a good STD metaphor horror is some fun, um, It Follows also underwhelmed me just a little bit. I think it's it's solid, but it never, I don't know, it never like turned that corner to fully realize what it was going for for me. So Django full throttle, delivered on everything I wanted. So it gets my vote. All right. Larry also going with Django Unchained. Uh, Sean? Yeah. I love STDs as, the, as much as everyone else, but also have to go with Django Unchained. Um, I, it's another one that I, I think, like we said before, uh, um, I think it was overhyped to me before I saw it. So it's was like, okay, cool. It was a little different. And then Django was um, another great Tarantino film where it follows is just another film. Um, I, I like Westerns and then you're getting Tarantino's version of it. I, yeah. Awesome. All right. John's also going Django and I'm also going with Django and Shane here. It follows. It is, it is a little overhyped. I agree with Sean. Very cool movie. Very original concept. STDs in a horror movie, but and there's a rewatchability. I'm not going to rewatch it a lot, but Django Unchained, I've seen like 10, 15 plus times. Uh, Jamie Foxx, Christoph Waltz, Leo, Sam Jackson. Come on. Yeah, Django for me. Um, what is the chat saying, Cody? They are with you guys. Quentin Tarantino is moving on. All right. Quentin Tarantino prevails. Django moves on. That does it for these round one matchups in the second bracket. All right. Let's go to round two here. We have. Joker versus Moonrise Kingdom. Joker versus Moonrise Kingdom. Uh, Larry? Um, I'm going to go with Moonrise Kingdom. All right. Larry's going with Moonrise. Wow. Uh, Sean? Still haven't seen Moonrise. Uh, oh, you Moonrise. haven't seen Moonrise Kingdom. All right. Yeah. Hasn't I saw it, it during yet. the first round, but I've since not watched it. So Okay, yeah. All right, Sean hasn't seen Moonrise Kingdom. Um, I'm going with Joker here. Uh, I've seen it twice, and I love it. Alyssa? 
Uh, also gotta go with Joker here. Um, like I said, Moonrise Kingdom wasn't my favorite uh, Wes Anderson movie. Uh, and Joker just has some interesting ideas, interesting themes, great performances, uh, wonderful cinematography. So I gotta go with Joker here. All right, Joker is the favorite here, but what's the chat saying, Cody? I haven't seen so many Joker comments in my life. All right. So, <laughs> lots of Joker comments. Sorry. Smile is still on the face for Joaquin Phoenix as he advances to the next round once again. All right, what's the next matchup? We have Green Book versus War for the Planet of the Apes. Green Book, War for the Planet of the Apes. All right, Mr. Chandler. Uh, go War for the Planet of the Apes. Like I mentioned before, Green Book, fun, accomplished what it was going for. Uh, but War for the Planet of the Apes, that, I, I think that's one of the great trilogies uh, of all time, especially in the last decade, and a nice solid conclusion to it. Yep, I'm going with Sean as well. More apes, more power for War for the Planet of the Apes. Uh, Green Book, fantastic, but uh, rewatchability is not up there in terms of apes. So I'm going War for the Planet of the Apes. Uh, Alyssa? Um, uh, again, both great movies, um, but I think we'll, we'll stick with the, uh, trend here of making everybody think I hate these, uh, Planet of the Apes <laughs> movies, despite the fact that I really enjoy them, uh, but I gotta go Green Book here. Um, I, I really enjoyed that movie. Um, again, War for the Planet is great as well, but Green Book. I respect you, Alyssa. Go with your heart <laughs> and your gut. Um, Alyssa's going with Green Book. Uh, Larry? Yeah, I just had too many problems on a base level with Green Book that are not there for War for the Planet of the Apes. Great heartfelt trilogy conclusion, so I'm going to vote for War. All right, War for the Planet of the Apes for Larry. Uh, what's the chat saying, though? I see a lot of people saying war, so I don't think they want a war in the chat. I think they want <laughs> war for the planet. Okay, we don't want a do. war, so let's just move on to the next one. <laughs> So War for the Planet of the Apes moves on. All right, what's next, Cody? We have <clears throat> Warrior versus Sicario. Warrior versus Sicario. All right, I'm starting this one. <clears throat> um, I'm going to go with Warrior. Uh, Warrior is a much better movie. Uh, Tom Hardy and Joel Edgerton, uh, Nick Nolte as well. It's a great drama, wrestling movie. Or MMA movie. Um, but yeah, I love Sicario, Denis Villeneuve, but that's not one of my favorites in Villeneuve movies. So, Warrior. Uh, Alyssa. Uh, it's a tough one. Um, I, It's hard because I've seen Sicario far more times. I only just recently saw Warrior for the first time uh, last week. Um, I really enjoyed it. Um, but Sicario has... Um, just has something more interesting to me. I, I love the underdog story. I love the the kind of matchup and everything within Warrior. Sorry, Sean, but uh, <laughs> I, I think I gotta go. Um, I gotta go against uh, the likely consensus here. Um, Sean, so. yeah, Sean's gonna go cry in a corner now. <laughs> um, so Alyssa goes with uh, Sicario. Sicario. And you went Warrior. Yeah, I went with Warrior. Uh, Larry. Yeah, maybe I uh, maybe it's just the subject matter at large that skews this one. I think Tom Hardy gives a great performance, but I'm also gonna have to vote for Sicario. I, um, it just kept me really invested and hooked. As I said, I I struggled, especially in the year it was released, to find a film that built tension as good as Sicario did. So yeah, I'm gonna vote for Sicario. All right, and Larry's also going with Sicario. Okay. Um, Sean, I know what you're going with. Yeah, I'm going to go with Sicario as well. No, oh, no, Warrior. Um, yeah, Sicario is great. I, I mean, everything they said about the tension, um, I mean, it does all of that. But Warrior is like my genre, done with excellence, um, touches on all the right things, people pursuing excellence, underdog stories, um, the way the movie's set up. Like, it's an hour straight of payoff. Like from an hour and ten minutes to two hours and ten minutes, it's like nothing but amazing payoff uh, on a, you know family level stuff, daddy issue things, all that stuff works for me. So, Warrior. All right, right. we have a tie. We have a tie. Sean went with Warrior. So, what's the chat going? I can we vote have a second tie, time. But the majority is <laughs> broken warrior. as Warrior. The yeah, chat went with warrior. warrior. So, Warrior. Tom Hardy <laughs> moves on once again as 
Bane in an MMA fire. Um, so um, let's go to the next matchup. We have Blade Runner 2049 Woo! versus Avengers Endgame. Ah! Oh, my God. <laughs> Blade Runner 2049 versus that Avengers <laughs> Endgame. All right, uh, Alyssa. Um, so this one's easy for me. End game. Uh, again, I wasn't a huge. It's not easy. Well, it's easy for me. Um, but uh, yeah, definitely end game. Um, all right. So Alyssa went with end game. Okay. Uh, Larry. So this is tough because the highs for end game are higher than my highs in Blade Runner. But my my problems and my lows with Endgame are also lower than any problem I had with Blade Runner. Um, I know some people try to like defend that Thor plotline. I am still not a fan of how it was executed uh, in Endgame. I don't know. Uh, but, I mean, I'm going to go Blade Runner 2049. Mm. All right, Larry's going with Blade Runner. Ooh. Blade Runner, Sean. Um, I'd actually agree with everything that Larry just said about the highs and the highs and the the Thorbowski plotline. I agree with all of that one hundred percent. At the end of the day, though, I've seen Endgame <laughs> like eight times this year, um, <laughs> and I think I've seen Twenty Forty Nine twice. Um, at the end of the day, which one do I actually like more? Not just objectively speaking and d -d 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 all that stuff. At the end of the day, I mean, end game, obviously. <laughs> I get to do this whole YouTube thing because of the MCU and what it's done for me. So I kind of owe it get to Kevin Feige and what he's done. And it's really paid it all. I like paid off all of that. Um, but you know, I've you know, as much as I really do agree with everything he said, uh, I go ahead. <clears throat> yeah. Um there's a part of me that wants to pick Blade Runner because it's a better made movie. But in terms of the film I've seen the most times and in love everything about, I got to go with Endgame here just because it, as an MCU fan, being a fan of this franchise for 10 years, the characters I care about, the action sequences, everything that has been said a million times. Um, I love Blade Runner 2049. I think it is the better made film. And technically the better movie, but for me personally, I'm going Endgame for this one. All right. Um, what did Sean choose? Sean chose Endgame. Yep. And majority and is so, also with and, Endgame. But someone said it's like choosing a child. Yeah. It's so difficult. And choosing a child. <laughs> making it difficult. But, uh, That's Endgame easy for me. I rank on. my kids all the time and let them know how they fall into <laughs> ranking. <laughs> he ranks his kids all the time. Yeah. Uh, all right. Let's. Uh, what's the next matchup? We have. Gone Girl versus Captain America the Winter Soldier. Uh, another 2014 battle. Gone Girl versus Winter Soldier. All right. Uh, let's have Sean start this one off. Uh, right. pretty. I, I guess I have to go Winter Soldier. Kind of the same criteria we just used. Like I, I really enjoyed the experience of watching Gone Girl. Very cool thriller. Like a neat experience that one time. But I don't put it back on. I watch Winter Soldier every year, if not multiple times per year. And you're talking once again about a movie that was distinct inside of its genre versus like, yeah, a very well done psychological thriller. So I'm going Winter Soldier. All right, Sean's going Winter Soldier, and I'm also going to go with Winter Soldier. I rewatched that movie multiple times for an MCU movie. It's an excellent political spy movie. And Gone Girl, excellent movie, but in terms of rewatchability, I'm going to put Winter Soldier on the edge. Um, Alyssa? Uh, I got to go with both of you guys on that, the uh, rewatchability aspect. Um Gone Girl, uh, I have rewatched it and I enjoy it on rewatches, but it it kind of it becomes something different, right? It loses a little something on rewatch because you know where it's going. Um, whereas Captain Captain America, uh, I mean, yeah, you know where it's going, but it doesn't really matter because where it's going isn't really the the you know the the core driver of the movie, right? It's the action and it's the um, characters and character development and interactions that that you really like in that. So I gotta go with Winter Soldier. 
All right, and uh, Winter Soldier for Alyssa. Uh, Larry? Marvel fans, I promise, I love the MCU, um, but I would vote for Gone Girl. <laughs> okay, I respect I respect that, Larry. That's got guts. You need to be like Captain America. <laughs> Larry went with Gone Girl. All right, what's the chat saying, though? Someone else earlier said, Larry, I respect that you just, like, put your opinion out there. Like, you know, yeah. so, like yeah, the, don't be afraid to put hey, your opinions out there. Um, I also respect that you're a hater. Like, uh, MC <laughs> <laughs> seems like MCU's taken over here, but some boats for Gone Girl. Plus, Sam Jackson shoots down some cops. So, <laughs> <laughs> that's got to take my vote. Um, anyway, so Winter Soldier moves on. Uh, but, what's their next one? Final matchup in round two. Dark Knight Rises versus Django Unchained. Batman versus Django. Oh, uh, this is 2012. Battle of the 2012 movies. Um, I'll start this one off. Um, I'm gonna go with Django Unchained here. I think it's a better movie. Jamie Foxx gives a great performance in there. Um, it's Quentin Tarantino. It has the action and that icy cold dialogue Tarantino has. Dark Knight Rises, excellent movie, though, but compared to Django, I'm going to go with Django because it's my favorite movie of 2012 next to The Avengers. Uh, Alyssa? Um, echoing your thoughts exactly <clears throat> here, I I, I enjoy um, both quite a bit, but Django uh, just kind of takes, takes it for me here. I, I like it a little bit more, um, and I... Yeah, I, I don't know what else to add beyond what you said. Uh, so, yeah. Django. All right, Alyssa's also going with Django. Larry? I'm also going to go with Django Unchained on this one. Another Django for Larry <laughs> and Sean. I'm going to go with Django Unchained. Um, I think the ambitions of The Dark Knight Rises exceeded the execution, oh. especially in the plot um, where nor normally Nolan is able to meet his ambitions or at least do a better job of fumbling forward. Whereas there's just some issues with dark Knight rises and Tarantino uh, properly executed his ambitions. All right. So we all went with Django. What did the chat go with Cody? Yep. Majority is Django, but somewhat mm -hmm. close, somewhat close. All right. And so that is the final matchup of the second round yep, here. Yep. We have six movies left here in this round. Let's go right into it. Joker versus war for the planet of the apes. All right, uh, Lisa. Um, I think everybody probably knows where I'm going with this one. <laughs> I guess I gotta go with Joker. Gotta keep it consistent here. All right, uh, Joker for Alyssa. Uh, Larry? I'm gonna go War of the Planet of the Apes. War for the Planet of the Apes. Yeah. War for the Planet of the Apes for Larry. Uh, Sean? Um, I think I'm gonna go Joker on this one. I had a few issues with War. All right, Sean is going with Joker. Uh, I'm going War for the Planet of the Apes. Wow. Oh, I'm going War <laughs> for the Planet of the Apes. Uh, I love it, love it. Just to keep it interesting. All right. I have an inkling that chat is laughing in a maniacal evil. <laughs> yeah, but what's going laugh. on in the chat, Cody? War, Joker, 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 duh. Joker, 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 war. All right. War, war, Joker. I'm seeing more <laughs> Joker. All right. Joker gets the last laugh yeah. once again and moves on. Fortunately, no apes moves on for the first time. All right. What's the next matchup? We have Avengers Endgame. Versus Captain America, the Winter Soldier. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's start Sean. S it seems like you want to talk. Sean. <laughs> <laughs> Sean. Um, I'm going to go Endgame. I, I just think what they're all the things they were able to pull off in that movie, satisfactory conclusion, uh, just works. And it's just the highs on it are so high. And Winter Soldier doesn't nearly approach those highs. I, th there's more, I have more issues with Endgame, but the highs are just so high that it carries it. All right, Sean's going Endgame. I'm also going Endgame because it's my favorite MCU movie, and Winter Soldier's like number three. I love both movies to death. I mean, I got to go with Endgame. Uh, Alyssa? This is a, an interesting and kind of tough matchup, right? Because we are looking at one movie that's kind of the the end result, right? It's all the the lead up and build up to this big event um, versus one of the contributing factors to that. Um, but I, 
They're both good, but I think I gotta go with Winter Soldier here. I, I think the story is really interesting and I love the, the kind of genre style, the, the kind of thriller, spy thriller aspect a little bit more than just the, the big, you know, spectacle superhero movie. So Winter Soldier for me. All right, Alyssa's going Winter Soldier. Uh, Larry? Yeah, I think uh, my past comments still stand for for my uh -huh. my general liking of uh, Winter Soldier, but I, I do love Endgame, so I'm going to go with Endgame. All right, and Larry's going Endgame. Uh, what's the chat Ooh. going with, though? I think with Sammy One World's final vote for Endgame, it just gave Endgame the edge. All right, Avengers Endgame. I love you 3,000 moves on. All right, what's the next matchup? Is this the last matchup in this one? We have Django Unchained versus Warrior. <clears throat> oh, Django God. Unchained versus Warrior. All right, let's start with uh, Larry. For this one, I'm going to uh, keep on the Tarantino train and vote for Django Unchained. It just had had more for me, just more going on as a whole. All right, one for Django. Sean. Oh, Warrior. It's, <laughs> oh, Warrior. Like Django's like a a great Tarantino film, but Warrior is like that once again. That's my genre, one of the greats of the genre. I'm the target audience, and it just it just works for me. It's the movie I keep telling people to go watch. All right, Sean with Warrior. Um I'm going with Django, just like Larry. I think um, you mispronounced Warrior. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's Django for me. I love you, Warrior. Um, Alyssa, though. Um, sorry, Sean, but I gotta go with Django. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I like Warrior. I like it quite a bit, but Django just has uh, it's Sean's has a little bit more. Oh, I'm sorry, Sean. <laughs> uh, what? You <laughs> propelled it for very far, Sean. <laughs> Well, maybe, maybe, is the chat with Sean or with us, Cody? <sighs> I think the chat's with Sean. Uh, the chat's with Sean. Yes! Sorry, Sean. And, oh. Sorry, Sean and chat. Um, <laughs> so, Django moves on. Moves on to the final four. Or the, the final champion? four. The final four. four. Are we in the final yeah, four we now? We are that. in the final four. Okay, guys. This is going to get super intense because now we're added in our number one seed, just in case you don't know what it is. Whiplash. 2014's Whiplash is now in the battle. All right. So what's the first matchup, Cody? Whiplash versus Joker. All right. Let's start with <laughs> Sean. Uh, I'm going to go Whiplash on this one. I mean... One of my favorite genres is the competitive jazz drumming genre. And this is just the best of that genre. Um, but, I mean, that's the thing that makes it so incredible is you take something that shouldn't be interesting to anyone and you turn it into this compelling character study about two people that are pursuing excellence at any cost. And you just make this compelling story and um, has just one of the coolest finales that if you describe it to someone, they'll be like, what? Why would that be fun? But or, or like, why would that be interesting and enticing? And it just works so well in the movie. And just seeing someone's face, like their eyebrows move in that scene is so powerful. That's incredible filmmaking. All right. Sean's going whiplash. And yeah, if you know me. <laughs> I do know you. Our percussion <laughs> extraordinaire. Whoa, whoa. Whiplash. Whiplash. Uh, I love Joker, but sorry, Whiplash. Not even close to better than Whiplash. Uh, Alyssa. Uh, Got to go with Whiplash as well. Um, mm -hmm. Like you said, like Sean said, that you wouldn't think jazz drumming would be a super interesting or exciting topic for uh, for a movie, mm -hmm. but it is incredibly intense and, and kind of takes a story in ways that you wouldn't expect. Um, the performances are fantastic. I love Joker, but got to go with Whiplash. All right. Uh, Larry? Do we go yeah. to Larry? Right, Larry. This one is another case where the the story in Whiplash just resonated with me on a on a deeper level. Maybe it's because I was in college as a music major, <laughs> pushing myself. Maybe not to the extent that this character did, um, or having a teacher like this character had. But I I really think that Whiplash. I don't know. It just spoke to me on a, a deeper level all the way around. So Whiplash. 
feel like watching that teacher made me a better parent to my five-year-old <laughs> and just trying to help them pursue excellence. <laughs> no Russian. No Russian. <laughs> All right. Um, so Whiplash is the majority here. Yep. All right. So what's the chat saying? And it looks like Joker's the majority in the chat. Oh, wow. Sorry, chat. The chat yeah, loves them some the Joker majority. today. Yeah, but do. Joker gets knocked down by J.K. Simmons. All right, so Whiplash moves on. Uh, what's the next one? All right, we have Avengers Endgame versus Django Unchained. Oh, ho, ho, ho. All right, I'll start this one off here. Be the brave soldier. Um, this is the tough, incredibly tough. That's why I'm still trying to think here. Um I'm going to go Django. Wow. I'm going to go Django Unchained. I love that movie. Sorry, Endgame, but I, I think Django is almost a perfect movie. Uh, Alyssa? It's a really hard matchup, um, but I, you know, it might come down to just uh, my, I guess, past history with these two movies. I have seen Django far more times than I've seen Endgame. Um, and while Endgame is a very satisfying kind of build up movie that like, you know, kind of gives us everything that we've been hoping for over the course of like a decade. Right. But I got, I got to go with Django as well. All right. Uh, Alyssa goes with Django as well. Uh, Larry. Oh, um, I guess I'm going to go Avengers end game because I think at times Tarantino leans into his most indulgent of compulses with Django. Um, so uh, on that front, it is a loose, I have more problems there, I guess, than I do with Lebowski Thor. So we're going to go Avengers Endgame. And I'm going to go with Endgame as well, punitively against um, Django for what it did in the last round. And I don't want to endorse <laughs> that behavior. Any sort of assault on Warrior doesn't work for me. So I have to go with Endgame for that reason. So I got hit with the glitch again. Uh, Larry, what did you go with? I went with Endgame. Okay, Larry went with Endgame, and Sean, you also went with Endgame? I did. All okay. right, so we're at a tie. The chat's going to have to decide this. The chat. All right. Um, looking at the chat. Man, this is tough. I know. Yeah. That's pretty close. Uh, let's take a look here. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. I think I'm seeing more. There's a lot of repeated votes. I think I'm seeing more endgame. All right. I think I'm seeing a little bit more endgame. All right. Endgame moves on from the power of the chat. So Avengers oh. Endgame moves on to the championship match. <laughs> Which is all right. Whiplash versus Avengers Endgame. All right, so Alyssa, we'll start with you. Um, I think my uh, the, the points that I made in the last round still stand here. Um, I, I like Endgame. I like what it did, but I got to go with Whiplash. I mean that between between the the story and the intensity and the um, the non-reliance on other movies to help kind of contribute to the, the greatness of it. Um, so I, I got to go with Whiplash. All right. One for Whiplash. Larry? Mm -hmm. um, I think I'm also going to have to vote for Whiplash again because it just really kind of resonated with me. On, on a deeper, more personal level uh, overall. And I didn't have as many problems in Whiplash. Like there is not many to have, I don't think, uh, compared to the few that I do have with Endgame. So I'm gonna vote for Whiplash. All right, Larry goes with Whiplash as well. Sean? It's interesting that it comes to these two movies that are <laughs> in scope and size. <laughs> no, <yeah. laughs> <About it. laughs> Three people in the cast over here. The entire all of Hollywood in one movie. Uh, I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with Whiplash. Um, I, I mean, I do have significant issues with 
Endgame that kind of hold it back from even being top MCU for me. And um, Whiplash is just a, a, a movie that is pretty special in how compelling it can be while being such a small story. Yeah, Whiplash. <laughs> Not even close. Uh, Avengers Endgame, excellent. But just because I'm an MCU fan doesn't mean I'm going to be biased. I got to go Whiplash. It's the better movie, obviously. Um, what's the chat, though, saying, Cody? Uh, it's so so split. It's so <laughs> split. Um it's so split. I, I honestly can't tell. But but since the majority, majority is voted, voted Whiplash. Whiplash is the winner of this bracket. And is the first of the number one seeds. To Brackets on. to come out on top. So, so far, moving on, we have Whiplash Dawn the the and Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. Two, 20, three. two 2014 movies already in the championship. Let's keep it moving. Um, let's go to bracket number three, guys. Uh, bracket number three, our number one seed in this bracket is what a lovely day. What a lovely day. <laughs> Mad Max Fury Road is the number one seed in this bracket. We'll come back to that. Our first matchup, guys, in this bracket is two completely different movies, different tone movies. 2015's Inside Out Pixar versus 2013's Prisoners, Denis Villeneuve versus Pixar. We're going to start with Larry on this one. Oh, um, God, it's <laughs> these ones might be the hardest ones just because I love them both and I love them really equally in their respective fields and what they're aiming to do. I think they both pretty much perfectly accomplish what they aim to, to do. They're just so different that it's like oh my god i'm going to vote for inside out um it might be my favorite pixar film of this entire decade if not top three for sure um yeah i am gonna i'm gonna give it to inside out all right larry's voting for inside out uh sean i haven't seen prisoners oh oh it's a great movie great movie all right so sean hasn't seen prisoners um i've seen both of these movies prisoners is Devastating, made me depressed. Hugh Jackman gives one of his best performances in that movie. It's a Denis Villeneuve movie, but I'm also going to go with Inside Out because I've seen it more times and it impacted me a little more. Um, love the characters and the messages it talks about in terms of emotions, something Pixar has done. And I just love the characters a little more and rewatchability. So I'm going Inside Out. Uh, Alyssa? Um, yeah, definitely an interesting pair up here. Like Larry said, sometimes it's, it's harder to pick between these two like very distinct movies because they're, they're so different, but both so good. Um, I, I got to go with you guys though and say Inside Out. Um, I think that one, while both are pretty emotional movies and have a lot of kind of impactful stuff, I think Inside Out really um, kind of takes it to, to a different level. Um, the animation is great and just the story, it's very creative. Um, so Inside Out for me. All right. Alyssa also goes with Inside Out. So the majority pick Inside Out, but what does the chat go with? The chat is also with Inside Out, but calling Prisoners super underrated. and It is. And someone's yeah. top 10 list. Yeah, Prisoners is excellent. But Inside Out, the emotions come out on top more. <laughs> Even though it is emotional, prisoners. Uh, <laughs> let's uh, let's go to the next matchup here. So we got 2012 Skyfall oh. versus 2017's The Shape of Water. Best Picture winner versus James Bond. Sean, um, I'm gonna go with Skyfall. Uh, Shape of Water is <laughs> not really my thing, um, <laughs> and. Bond is my thing, and that's a very solid Bond film. Yeah, I'm also going to go with uh, Skyfall. It's actually might be my favorite Bond movie. Need to rewatch Casino Royale. Love Daniel Craig as James Bond. Love Javier Bardem as the villain. Uh, Shape of Water, I've seen it twice. Fine movie. Oscar Bates, Guillermo del Toro. Del Toro has a huge fan base, but uh, would I rewatch a fish man? Having sex with uh, Sally Hawkins again, not really. But would I rewatch uh, James Bond again shooting down some guys and blowing up a house and car? Yeah. So I got to go with Skyfall. Uh, Alyssa? 
Both are really good, um, but I, I think I'll kind of dissent here from you guys and go with Shape of Water. Um, I am a really big fan of Guillermo del Toro. Um, it's not my favorite movie of his, but it might be my second favorite of his. Um, I think it's really interesting, uh, and um, I, I just I, I love how his movies are always crafted in a way that you could view them uh, through kind of different lenses as either kind of fairy tale type movies versus um, actual reality based versus some some way of a character trying to deal with a, a terrible or uh, difficult situation and kind of how how it all blends together. Uh, the cinematography is awesome. Uh, definitely a shape of water for me, but I do love Bond. I love Skyfall. Probably my second favorite of the Daniel Craig ones, but Shape of Water. All right, Alyssa's going with Shape of Water. Uh, Larry. So I also am going to go with the Shape of Water. Uh, I had a lot of fun with Skyfall. It is my favorite James Bond film. I'm just not a big Bond fan as a franchise overall. This is the peak. I, I don't know if they'll ever be able to top this for me. I do think it was really well done. But The Shape of Water just speaks on so many issues uh, without hammering it over your head. It just is a really beautifully crafted allegory for so many things and a really beautiful story with an amazing performance from Sally Hawkins and a wonderful score. So Shape of Water for me. All right, this is fun. We're back to another tie here. Oh. Larry went with Shape of Water. What is the chat going with? Gotta love a good tie here, but it looks like Skyfall with an edge is Giving love edge. to Daniel Craig. Skyfall comes out on top over Shape of Water, and it moves on. All right, guys, our next matchup. Again, completely different movies, but this is how the matchup came. 2010's Toy Story 3. Versus 2019's Waves. Huh. All right. We're going to start. Oh. <laughs> Apparently, we are not going to start. And I thought uh, Kelvin Harrison Jr. gives one of the most underrated performances, as well as Sterling K. Brown. But if you know me personally, I'm going Toy Story 3. Uh, it's my – it's excellent – I think it's the perfect conclusion to the trilogy, even though Toy Story 4 was a great movie. I've seen it more times. I love Lotso as a villain and just made me cry. Made me cry really hard at the final scene. But I'm going Toy Story 3. Uh, Alyssa? I have not seen Waves. It oh, you have not seen Air Waves. This is the only other one I haven't seen, so i got to abstain from this. All right, so Alyssa is out for this. She has not seen Waves. Uh, Larry? Yeah, so I liked Waves. I liked the acting and think that they did some daring choices. However, I don't think all of those daring choices quite paid off for me personally, whereas Toy Story 3 was darn near perfect. So I'm going to give it to Toy Story 3. All right, Larry's going with Toy Story 3. Sean? Um, Waves was an emotional gut punch, but I thought it was also kind of like too long and a little bit too much. Uh, so Toy Story 3, one of the great animated films of all time. A am I incorrect that we still have a finish this bracket plus another bracket? So we're only about halfway through all of this. Yeah, we're halfway <laughs> okay, through. We're gonna be talking a lot quicker from now on. No more jokes. <laughs> all right, so Sean goes with Toy Story 3. What is the chat going? Uh, they're with you guys. Toy Story 3 is all right. Toy Story 3 easily moves on. So now let's go to the next matchup uh, 2017's Baby Driver versus 2019's The Lighthouse. Uh, Sean? Yeah, I mean, The Lighthouse, I can respect the craftsmanship <laughs> of it, but it's like not. <laughs> Not really <laughs> like too metaphoric, too Kubrick, and that's just not my wavelength. Baby Driver, that's my thing. Uh, just even the way that it edited to the music, very cool movie. Baby Driver, all right. Sean's going with Baby Driver. Um, I'm going with The Lighthouse, uh, it's one of my favorite movies of the year so far. I love Wilm the Phone, Robert Pattinson, and that Robert Eggers, another great movie. I'm going with Lighthouse, uh, Alyssa. Um, so the lighthouse i'm kind of with sean on this where i kind of i appreciate it but i wasn't i i didn't really enjoy it that much i love the, the technical aspects the cinematography the sound design uh the score all great um the performances were pretty intense but just from a story side i wasn't really that into it um 
Uh, but Baby Driver, I mean, I just I actually just rewatched Baby Driver again today before um, before this. But uh, Baby Driver, I, I love Edgar Wright. I and and just kind of the the melding of the music with the um, the story. I think it was really well done. So Baby Driver. All right, Alyssa's going with Baby Driver. Uh, Larry. Yeah, it's definitely a tough one. I think that The Lighthouse is really great. Um, and I'm with you on so many points, uh, Ryan. I really like it a lot. Yeah. But I love Baby Driver. Um, so I'm going to give it to Baby Driver, especially just the editing and the sound is so phenomenal in Baby Driver. It was really something special. It is my favorite Edgar Wright film. I know maybe that's controversial. I'm not sure, but I, I love it. So I'm going to also go Baby Driver. All but right. I do love the Lighthouse. The majority went with Baby Driver. What did the chat go with? Chad is also going with Baby Driver. I went with Batman. All right. Um, so Baby Driver comes out on top. All right. Let's go to our next matchup here. Uh, 2016's Hell or High Water versus 2016's Hacksaw Ridge. Battle of the, 20 Battle of the 2016 movies. Uh, let's start with Alyssa. Um... So both of them I enjoyed, but both of them weren't like top, top movies for me. Um, so it's kind of hard because they're kind of equal to me. Um, I think uh, it's hard. I'll probably go with Hacksaw Ridge. Um, I thought the story was really interesting. Not that Hell or High Water wasn't interesting, but um, mm. for, for two movies I thought were just, you know, better than good, but not great. Um, Got to go with Hacksaw Ridge, I think. All right, one for Hacksaw Ridge. Uh, Larry? Yeah, Hell or High Water I think is really good, but I loved Hacksaw Ridge. I thought it was pretty great. I loved the messaging. Andrew Garfield was fantastic. So Hacksaw gets my vote. Hacksaw, another Hacksaw. Sean? Yeah, Hacksaw Ridge. Uh, just such a cool war movie. That does <laughs> so many different things that th this genre normally does and then does something different with it at the same time. So, Hacksaw. All right, Hacksaw. So, yeah, I'm also going Hacksaw. It was my favorite movie of 2016. Love Hell or High Water, though. That's a very underrated movie, but Hacksaw gets my vote. And great job, Mel Gibson. Uh, what is the chat going with? Uh, everyone is with Hacksaw Ridge except for one vote. So, okay, Hacksaw so Ridge. Hacksaw Ridge, the love is with Mel Gibson right here on this one. All right, the and next match. It's not matchup. common for the internet. I know. <laughs> Here's our next matchup, guys. Oh. 2011's Hugo versus 2015's The Martian. Uh, let's start with Larry. Yeah, Hugo was one that I enjoyed, but I didn't quite get to that love factor um, while I did love the martian quite a bit so i'm gonna vote for the martian all right one for the martian sean haven't seen hugo oh. i also haven't seen hugo oh. so i'm out of this one as well better now all right <laughs> uh Alyssa? Um, so this one's an easy choice for me i gotta go with martian as well um i did like hugo i think it it kind of showed some interesting stuff and has some nods to um you know cinema and kind of film loving film in general um but uh the martian martian definitely for me all right two for the martian well what's the chat going with let's see here one two three four for hugo one two three four five the Martian gets the end. All right. The Martian is the clear favorite. And if I saw Hugo, I also would have gone with The Martian. <laughs> <laughs> I love The Martian so much, man. Um, let's go to our next matchup, though. Two completely different movies. Uh, 2012's Argo versus 2014's John Wick. All right. Mr. Chandler. All right. As a hardcore <laughs> action movie fan, I got to go with the... It's it's like the premium action movie of the decade that um, took a genre that just doesn't get like hard R shoot people in the face action movies aren't <laughs> super common right now. This is like the one that cut through and you know did the Keanu sans is, is happening now in the year 2019. It goes back to John Wick. One of these movies that literally came out of nowhere, sounded ridiculous, and then. Here we are, Keanu Sons. I'm also, 
Uh, going with John Wick. This resurgitated Keanu Reeves' career. He's in a lot more movies now because of this movie. And I think it's his best franchise. I love John Wick as a character. Love the action. That night club scene is awesome. Argo is one of those movies I don't think deserve best picture. Uh, Django. Uh, but still, uh, going with Mr. Wick. Uh, Alyssa? Um, I, I really enjoy Argo, but I got to go with Wick as well. Um, the action and it's fantastic. Even the story too, like with an action movie like this, you wouldn't expect there to be kind of that heartfelt undertone, but it starts off on a pretty, pretty downbeat note and then kind of grows from there. And then like I said, the action, um, kind of coined gun foo, right? His like, um, yeah, his action is just great. So John Wick. All right, John Wick, uh, Larry. Yeah, Argo is solid, but a little bit underwhelming for me as a Best Picture winner, um, whereas John Wick blew all of my expectations out of the water and is a complete blast, as have been the sequels. So I'm Literally, also going to vote for John Wick. <laughs> <laughs> all right, John Wick prevails and comes out on top. All right, guys, let's go to the next matchup right here. This is a tough matchup for a lot of people. So we got 2017's Logan. Versus 2014's Birdman. I want to start with you, Alyssa. Ryan. <laughs> We're going to go um, to Alyssa first. So this is easy for me. got to go with Logan. Uh, I wasn't a huge fan of Birdman. Um, I like the the, the the sort of technical side, the idea of the the one one take kind of shot, even though obviously it was uh, they cheated a few times with some of the transitions. But I really appreciate that aspect. But the story just wasn't there for me. Whereas Logan, I mean, come on, it's, it's Logan. <laughs> so um, Logan. No, good choice, Alyssa. Uh, she's going with Logan. Uh, Larry. Yeah, I love Birdman, actually. I think, again, it's a technical feat. Um, but I'm also going to vote for Logan. As I mentioned earlier in this broadcast, I am an X-Men fanboy. And this was uh, everything I could have ever asked for in a conclusion to these characters. So Logan was one of my favorite films of that year and one of the best comic book films of all time for me. So there you go. All right. Larry's going with Logan. Sean? Yeah, I got to go, Logan. One of the greats of the genre. A great send-off to a couple of classic comic book movie characters. Birdman, I mean, <laughs> technically speaking, <laughs> like the, uh, I mean, the Birdman? single take thing. <laughs> Wait, what? Happened? He said Birdman? <laughs> well, I lost my train of thought because. Uh, <laughs> All right, so but, Sean went with Burn Man. I'm just but, like, it's a movie that if you remove the single take gimmick, it, it just doesn't stand as much. There's just not much beyond that. People talk about still the gimmick, but not really what the movie is about. Again, if you liked that single take in Birdman, make sure you go and watch 1917. <laughs> much no. better and a, more appropriate. Yeah. Uh, if you know me, if you know my channel, I think Birdman's the most overrated film this decade, <laughs> easily. I don't get why people love this movie. It's fine. It's a one-take movie, but I try to watch this movie every time to see what people say about it. Michael Keane's great in it. Don't get me wrong. But Logan is its a masterpiece. It's not even close to better than Logan. So I'm going with Logan. All right, what's the chat going with that? Uh, yeah, two votes for about Birdman. The rest are for <laughs> Mr. Logan. All right, so Wolverine comes off and slashes Birdman. Moving on to the next round. All right, so next matchup, guys, is very different, but I think this one will be an easy sweep. 2016's Moana versus 2010's Inception. Nolan versus Di Disney. Uh... I'll start this one off right here. I'm easily going with Inception. It's easily in a masterpiece above all these movies. Uh, Nolan, one of his best movies. I love Leo in this. Tom Hardy brings a lot of dream sequences. JGL on a wall. The score by Hans Zimmer is one of his best of all time. And it leaves a lot of questions, a lot of film discussions about that ending. And... It's Inception. I love Moana. Love Moana. Sorry, Cody, but Inception. I'll go cry later. <laughs> uh, watch it, Alyssa. Um, so no contest here for me. I got to go Inception as well. I just love that movie. Definitely one of my favorites of the decade. Um, 
probably my favorite for Nolan as well. Um, Moana, while okay, I found a little underwhelming, um, but Inception, definitely not underwhelming for me. All right, Inception for Alyssa. Larry? Okay, so this is definitely kills me because I love Moana like so much. It's my favorite of the Disney Renaissance or revival era films. I just love it and I adore it and I wish it would have been anywhere else <laughs> in the bracket basically because it definitely would get my <clears throat> vote. Um, you know what? Just because I anticipate it will lose, I will vote for Moana. I love Inception, mm. and um, yes, but I'll vote for Moana just just to, to give her a vote. All right, Larry voted for Moana just as a vote. Um, Sean? Uh, yeah, I'll vote for Moana too. The Rock sings in it. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, I agree with Alyssa. It's kind of underwhelmed by it. Um, Inception, however, is just an original blockbuster this decade which is so rare and it's excellent like just such a well-crafted concept script and execution um incredible stuff like this much more to me than the dark knight is why nolan is a legend yeah enough needs to be said uh what's the chat going with i'm sure it's Yes, majority is going with Inception. I, I commend those people who said Moana. No. <laughs> um, cool. All right, so now let's go to the next match. The one right guy that here. said Moana all the time. <laughs> talk more with Denis Villeneuve and X-Men because our next matchup is 2016's Arrival versus 2014's X-Men Days of Future Past. All right, so let's start with Alyssa here. Um, both very enjoyable movies, but I definitely have to go with Arrival here. Um, I think it was an excellent uh, kind of take on an alien movie. It's not not the kind of approach that we're used to. Um, I like the the kind of science side of things and the, the linguistics and trying to communicate. Um, so while Days of Future Past is good, um, I don't actually... Uh, I don't know if I like that one as much as First Class. Um, so uh, Arrival for me. All right, one for Arrival. Uh, Larry? Yeah, I was never really on the Arrival train. Um, I think it is solid, and I like what it has to say about communication, but it loses me in that third act to a point where I'm just like, what in the world? Um, and I think that's part of my problem with a lot of these time travel movies. And here I go praising a time travel movie with <laughs> X-Men Days of Future Past. But I love it. It's my favorite of all of the actual group X-Men films. And it's pretty close with Logan. They're like right neck and neck for me personally. They're just so different that I hold them to you know, their own esteem. I think it's great. I love the future scenes. I think they handle the time travel wonderfully it handles our characters and balancing them very well so i'm gonna vote for days of future past all right uh larry's going with days of future past here uh sean sean also isn't really on the arrival train when he watched it at home he didn't catch it in the theater maybe it was overhyped to him but he just wasn't crazy about it um and then you have X-Men Days of Future Past, which is just another really solid comic book movie. Genre I love, characters I love, time travel, Sean also loves. So Sean votes X-Men Days of Future Past. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Sean goes with Days of Future Past. I saw Arrival twice. I saw it in the theater, and I fell asleep the last act of the movie. I loved it a second time, though. I love Arrival. Oh, okay. It's an excellent movie. But I've seen Days of Future Past a little more, and it hits me more at home. It's one of my favorite X-Men movies. So I'm also going to go with Days of Future Past. I think it's one of the best X-Men movies. Love the time travel aspects, the action. Boss Bender, so good in that movie, and Hugh Jackman as well. Love the mix of the old and the new cast. So i got to go Days of Future Past here. Sorry, Arrival. Um. So I went with Days of Future Past and blah. What does the chat go with? What's the majority here? So Alyssa went with Arrival. The majority is Days of Future Past. All right. And the uh, a majority is Arrival. Wow. By one. By one. By so, one. But Days of Future Past, though, was the winner. So Days of Future Past moves on. Whew! Another animated perfect matchup right here. This is the battle oh. of the 2014 animated movies. We got the Lego movie versus Big Hero 6. The best animated future winner and the film that wasn't nominated. Oh, oh. 
All right. Sorry, I had to get passionate there. So I will start this one off. Um, I got to go Big Hero 6. I rewatched this movie recently. I love this movie. I love the Lego movie. Don't get me wrong. But I think How to Train Your Dragon 2 should have gotten it. But I think Big Hero 6 has so much heart. I love Baymax and Hero, their relationship. I love how it had a brother relationship. Super depressing. And it had a great team. I want a sequel to this movie. It hasn't come out yet. But uh, I love Lego movie. But I got to go with Big Hero 6. Uh, Alyssa? These were both um, both movies that kind of I, I didn't have a ton of excitement for going into either of them, um, but they, they both surprised me. But I got to say, Lego Movie surprised me more. I did not expect to like that one, and I ended up loving it. Um, and so uh, while Big Hero 6 has kind of that emotional aspect um, and, like you said, the, the relationships and, and it's pretty much a superhero movie, a superhero animated movie, um, I got to go with Lego Movie here. All right, Lissa's going with Lego Movie. Eric? Uh, yeah, so Lego Movie I liked, if you can hear me right. <laughs> um, Lego Movie. Maybe he's just standing really still. Uh, I'm like, uh, da, 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 da. <laughs> I don't know. I wonder, can the chat hear us when we're talking? I think, yeah, I think. Well, okay. I, think so. I don't know. I was like, I don't know. <laughs> Hi, That'd chat. would be awesome if we could have secret conversations whenever this happened. That'd be amazing. Oh, there he is. Oh, hey, Ryan. <laughs> I got hit with the glitch again. So what did you go with, Larry? Yeah, so I think Lego Movie is fun, but I didn't love it quite as much as, as the majority did. Big Hero 6, I also don't think should have won Best Animated Feature. I'm on the How to Train Your Dragon 2 train as well well um but i mean baymax for life so i'm gonna go with big hero six all right big hero six for larry sean uh i like legos and i like the matrix <laughs> so i'm gonna go with the lego movie all right sean's all right. going with lego movie uh, so down to the chat. Sean, so now we're going to the chat yep we have a tie but everything is awesome What's all right going on? lego movie comes out all on right. top everything is awesome lego movie moves on all right, let's go to our next matchup, the Battle of the 2018 Movies. So we got 2018's A Quiet Place versus 2018's A Star is Born. John Krasinski versus Bradley Cooper. All right, let's start with Alyssa. Um, this is an easy one for me, definitely A Quiet Place. Um, I really enjoyed that movie. I think it was an extremely interesting concept, um, and the performances were great, but it, it, it takes a story that, um, you know, you, you expect horror movies to be kind of more visual and 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 you know horror movies a lot of times have that sound aspect but it's like jump scares um and this the sound design in this movie was phenomenal um it was great and so while i do like a star is born and i i can appreciate why so many people um really love that movie i definitely have to go with a quiet place sorry jay uh larry um yeah this one is a close one for me I think A Star is Born just edges out personally. Maybe again, it is that emotional, um, but A Quiet Place is great. I'm excited for that sequel too, but I'll vote for A Star is Born. Trailer comes out New Year's. Uh, Sean? Yeah, I think both of these were in my top 10 last year. I got to go A Star is Born though. Um, it's got music that I enjoyed. Um, I, stories of people kind of like discovered talent resonate with me. Uh, stories of addiction uh, connect with some of my own issues in the past. And so for me, uh, this was probably the most uh, the movie that covered the most emotional spectrum oh. for me. Like it just hit so many different emotions for me. So I'm gonna go with Star is Born. Uh, yeah, this is a tough matchup for me, but in terms of like my favorite movies of the year, I'm going with A Quiet Place. I think A Quiet Place is an excellent movie. John Krasinski doing horror. I can't wait for the sequel. That's one of my most anticipated next year. I love the concept of silent as hell next to these creatures trying to survive in this deadly world. And I just, I, I, that ending gets to me. Ah! Sorry, but uh, I'm going. <laughs> I'm going. I'm quiet, please. Where's the majority? 
So um, well, it's a mix. Split split again. Again. We gotta go to the chat. Okay. I saw a lot more Quiet Place. All right, a Quiet Place comes out on top. So that is the final matchup for the third bracket in round one. So what is the round two matchups? All right, let's get going here. Uh, just for time's sake, let's just say what you vote for. Just we gotta get through these. Yeah, because we're almost at the end game run time. <laughs> All right, here we go. Uh, Inside Out versus Skyfall. All right, uh, Lissa. Uh, Inside Out. All right, uh, Larry. Inside Out. All right, two for Inside Out. Sean? I'm actually going to go Inside Out. Oh. Inside Out. Uh, me, I'm also going Inside Out. Interesting. Right. What about the wow. chat? Well, let's see if it'll catch up. <laughs> um, it is not showing up yet because we just did that so quick, but majority went to you guys, so. All right, Inside Out. I'm seeing people say Inside Out. So Inside Out moves on to the next round. Don't we have Toy Story 3 versus Baby Driver. Toy Story 3 and Baby Driver. Larry? Toy Story 3. One for Toy Story 3. Sean? Toy Story 3. Toy Story 3. I'm also going with Toy Story 3. Uh, Lissa? Definitely Toy Story 3. <laughs> Toy Story 3 for us, and what about the chat? Wow. Sweep, we'll see in a little bit. Someone said <laughs> we'll the see after movie. the next vote. <laughs> All right, uh, let's go to the next matchup. We have John Wick versus Logan. John Wick versus Logan. Sean? Uh, I think I got to go Logan. Man, I just went against action movies three times in a row, but Logan. <laughs> All right, Logan for Sean. I'm also going with Logan. Sorry, Keanu. Alyssa? Uh, gotta go with John Wick. John Wick. All right, Larry? Uh, Logan for me. Logan for Larry. What about the chat? We'll see. All right, so Logan. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, I'm move. seeing a lot of Logans. Someone said cats. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Inception. That's for another time. Inception uh, versus X-Men Days of Future Past. All right, I'm going with Inception. Uh, Alyssa? Inception. Uh, two for Inception. Of, Larry? Why is Inception a buzzsaw through my heart with all of these choices? Uh, I mean, I, I have to vote Inception. All right. Inception. Three for Inception. And Sean's Inception as well. All right. And the final matchup here we have The Lego Movie versus A Quiet Place. All right, Alyssa? Um... A Quiet Place. A Quiet Place for Alyssa. Uh, Larry? A Quiet Place. Quiet Place for Larry. Uh, Sean? I'll go with Quiet Place. Quiet Place? Uh, I'm also going to go with A Quiet Place here. What about the chat? Um, let's see. I'm sorry. I uh, see Playmobil the movie. What they Playmobil wins. Yay! <laughs> All right. We got another matchup here. All right. A bunch of Quiet Places are probably Super, Super Mario. What? Uh, what's the next one? Hacksaw Ridge versus The Martian. Hmm. All right, Larry? Um, The Martian. The Martian for Larry. Sean? Come back to me. Come back to you? All right. Um, right. I'll go Hacksaw Ridge. Uh, Alyssa? The Martian. The Martian for Alyssa. Wow. Sean? I think I have to go Hacksaw Ridge. I, maybe I thought maybe I could keep it simple, but I got to go Hacksaw Ridge. Yeah. I think the chat agrees with you, All right, we're at a tie. Okay, so Hacksaw, Hacksaw, Martian, Hacksaw, Hacksaw, Hacksaw Ridge. Hacksaw Ridge moves that was pretty. On. That was a tough one. Yeah, that was Okay, tough. we have six movies left. That was really tough. Battle of Pixar, Woo! Inside Out versus Toy Story 3. Uh, Ooh, hoo, hoo. Uh, start. All right, if I'm going in my Pixar ranking, Toy Story 3 is higher, so I got to go Toy Story 3. Sorry, Inside Out. Uh, Alyssa? Super hard, but Toy Story 3. All right, Alyssa, also going with Toy Story 3. Larry, incredibly difficult, man. <laughs> I know. This one is so hard. Just for the sake of it being an original story, I'm going to go with Inside Out. 
Inside out for Larry. Sean? According to my notes, I went with Toy Story 3. They're great. Toy Story 3 for Sean in the chat. Uh, Toy Story 3. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm seeing majority going to Toy Story 3. Yes, so three. Toy Story 3, move on. Is that the end of... Nope. We have Logan versus Inception. <sighs> oh, oh, oh. Uh, Sean? <laughs> I think I'd go Inception. I think that one wowed me a bit. That, no, that one wowed me. The other uh, Logan was just really like a great film, but I was wowed by Inception. Yeah, I'm also going to go Inception. Uh, Alyssa? Inception. <laughs> Inception, Larry? I'm going to pull a Moana again and just say Logan. <laughs> just just to give it a vote. You be with Christopher Larry. Nolan. Uh, what did Christopher Nolan do wrong? It's Logan, so Logan, tough. Inception, Inception is Inception, just Inception, mowing Inception. down my faves. Find Dory. <laughs> Dory wins. Yeah. Majority is to Inception. All right. And Nolan comes out on top again. Inception moves All right. on. Last one. Well, not last. Quiet Place versus Hacksaw Ridge. I'm going to go with Hacksaw Ridge. Uh, Alyssa? A tough one, they're so different, but uh, I think I could go with a quiet place. Quiet place for Alyssa, Larry. I'm going to go with Hacksaw Ridge, Hacksaw Ridge for Larry, Sean. And I think I'm gonna go with quiet place, it's such a unique concept. Wow. Execute, no, we're just gonna keep bringing it to a tie. Yeah. With a cat in. Okay, this right. is what you're here, chat. Yeah, chat. <laughs> let's get you guys involved. Quiet place, hacksaw, hacksaw, quiet, 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 hacksaw. Hacksaw. I think I see more hacksaw, dude. Quiet. Hacksaw. It's a tie. Quiet. I think it might be quiet, Ryan. The good dinosaur. The good dinosaur wins. Oh, yeah. and green flower. Quiet <laughs> yeah, place. Right there, just. <laughs> All right. I guess the quiet place comes out yeah. on top. A quiet place comes <clears throat> in and moves on. Um, is that the end of round three? That we have, we have four movies left. All oh, right, wow. so now we're into the round three. We got to oh. add in our number one bracket. That is Mad Max Fury Road 2015 is added on in here. Yep. So what are the matchups? And it doesn't make it any easier. Mad oh, Max no. Fury Road versus Toy Story 3. <laughs> uh, let's start with Larry. Oh, my God. Uh, Mad Max Fury Road. Mad Max Fury Road for Larry. Sean? I'm going to go Mad Max Fury Road. More interesting. Sean's going with Mad Max Fury Road. I'm going Toy Story 3. Uh, Alyssa? I'm um, going Toy Story 3 as well. Oh, here we go Alyssa's again. Going to it. <laughs> Child, childhood versus uh, insane dudes. Um, so we got another one. tie now. What is the chat? Toy going? Story 3, Mad Max, Mad <clears throat> Max, Mad Max, Mad Max. Toy Story 3, Mad Max, Mad yeah. Max. Oh. I agree with C.A. Cougar. I think it's Mad Max. This is the hardest bracket so far for me. (laughs) Mad Max Fury Road beats Toy Story 3, beats our childhoods. But Mad Max Fury Road, (laughs) come on top. Inception Uh, versus A Quiet Place. Uh, I'll start this one off, Inception. Uh, Alyssa? Inception. Inception. Uh, Larry? Inception. Larry with Inception. Sean? Inception. Inception and it didn't dominates have to take down my face. Okay. <laughs> we are down to our final two films. But this, oh my god! Uh, and the other chat hasn't even shown up yet for that matchup. But Mad Max Fury Road versus Inception. All right, let's start with Alyssa. Uh, gotta go with Inception. Inception, Larry. Oh my gosh. Uh. <laughs> um. I'll probably, I, I'm gonna now, go this is really like choosing between a kid. <laughs> I can't. I was like, oh my god, these are definitely like up there. Up this there is for like my the Godfather of the picking against the Godfather too. <laughs> uh, I think just because it's original in comparison to a sequel reboot, I'll go Inception. All right, Inception for Larry. Uh, Sean, originality Inception. or sequel? Inception. I'm also going to go with Inception. Okay. Wow. Excellent. One of my favorite movies. There it is. Um, Inception. So Inception for me, the chat is... 
Inception, it looks Inception, like. Inception, Inception, yeah. Toy Story. All right, Inception moves on. Is that... That's the end of the third bracket. All right, Inception Woo! is our pick for bracket number three. Okay. And now this is the last bracket, guys. Bracket number four. Our, num our number one seed is 2016's Moonlight. Probably oh. the most surprising. Probably the most surprising pick we've seen in many people's top ten lists. But Moonlight is the number one seed. And our first matchup of this final bracket is 2019's Parasite versus 2011's Rise of the Planet of the Apes. Uh, Alyssa, we're looking at you, luck, girl. Sean, let's start it you off. <laughs> um, I don't know. I know you're supposed, to, you're supposed to go Gaga for Parasite, but... Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> It, it like I I kind of really get it. It very much surprised me, but there there's just a few things in that third act that I just I couldn't quite get with where the characters <laughs> got pushed to the level that they were to go where the movie went with it in the third act. So I couldn't quite. Uh, and maybe it's because so many people the movies introduce it. It's a masterpiece. It is the masterpiece of the decade. I just couldn't get there. Uh, whereas I I loved Rise of the Planet of the Apes. I like went went in expecting to hate it and it was just so won over by it so um i gotta go so, rise. so rise of the planet of the apes for sean continuing on the apes train I love and rise i just gotta apes. say that i'm a fan of apes unlike someone in here <laughs> <laughs> so i love rise of the planet of the apes great start to this sequel trilogy it's amazing andy circus no but I'm easily going Parasites. Like, this is one of my favorite movies of the year. It speaks a lot about the upper class and the middle class. And Bong Joon-ho is going to make a name for himself come Oscar season. I love the ending. It shocked the heck out of me when I saw it in the theaters. And it left me thinking. So I'm going Parasite. What about Alyssa? So <laughs> I promise I love Planet of the Apes. I know like these matchups yeah. have been terrible. I, mean, I believe you. I, I, believe you. I, I enjoy Planet of the Apes. We are calling Peter. We Alyssa. believe this you. Is abuse, Alyssa. But I, I gotta go with Parasite on this one. Um it it's such an interesting story and it's so it, it starts as something and ends as something completely different, but it it works, it flows. And even though there's like a very kind of abrupt genre shift, it works and it doesn't feel abrupt in the moment. Um, and it's just, it's, it's a dark comedy, but it's a mystery. It's got, you know, touches of Hitchcock. It's got touches of Agatha Christie. It's just, it's great. Parasite. All right. Parasite for Alyssa. Uh, Larry? Yeah, Rise is strong, but I think it's the weakest of its trilogy. And I agree. Parasite, I think, was pretty amazing. So I'm going to have to go with Parasite. All right, Larry also goes with Parasite. Uh, what's the chat going with, though? Uh, definitely Parasite takes oh. this one. No, Terminator Dark Fate is what they went with. Yeah, so, Terminator! But uh, no, uh, Parasite is the favorited one, and that moves on. Our next matchup is easy for me. Easy for me. Uh, 2015 Star Wars oh. The Force Awakens <laughs> versus 2017's Dunkirk. Right. Uh, I'll start this one off. Next to Birdman, Dunkirk is the second most overrated <laughs> film this decade. I think it's the most overrated Nolan movie. Again, I, I enjoy the technical aspects. Sure, it sounds amazing, but could care less about the characters involved with it. But, uh, uh, Force Awakens, I'm easily going with that because it brought Star Wars back for me. Um, all these characters, the franchise continuing forward goes pretty eh. But Force Awakens is one of my favorite Star Wars movies. Brought it back. I cried in the theater watching it. So, Star Wars fan here. Sorry. Uh, Alyssa? Um, so, I... I like Dunkirk, but I would say it's one of my least favorite of Nolan's movies. Um, again, that's kind of, you know, his really high bar. So even his weaker uh, movies are great. Um, but I got to go with Force Awakens as well. Um, I, I really enjoy that one. I, uh, I don't know. Arguably, it might be one of my favorites of the Star Wars <clears throat> franchise. I don't know if it makes it to the top top, but I, I really enjoy Force Awakens. All right. Force Awakens for Alyssa. Uh, Larry? 
Yeah, I'm in the same boat of enjoying Dunkirk, appreciating all of the technical feats that Nolan was able to do, but just having a little bit of a disconnect, uh, particularly probably with the characters. And honestly, I'm going to say I think 1917 hurt Dunkirk a little bit because I actually gravitated toward those characters in a really like high paced technical. So it's Dunkirk field. done right. Man, <laughs> 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 no fans, I didn't say that. Um, but I am going to vote for the Force Awakens. All right, Larry's also going with Force Awakens. Uh, what about you, Sean? Uh, I, I mean, I probably like the Dun Dunkirk. Most out of the four of us, I mean, especially that, that just coming out of the theater just had a like, oh, I really enjoyed this. But it's not a movie that stuck with me, and it's not a movie that I could praise like I could other things. To Larry's point, um, uh, 1917 really does capture that in the war itself visceral experience better than Dunkirk did. And Dunkirk, I thought, did a great job, but 1917 does so much better of a job. So Force Awakens, it has uh, a Death Star, but it's even bigger. That means it's even better. <laughs> yeah. Pop a Death Star. Um, so Sean's going with Force Awakens. Uh, what about the chat? Clean sweep with you guys. Clean sleep for the chat. All right. Force Awakens, the Force is strong with that one. All right. The next matchup is 2010's How to Train Your Dragon. Very weird matchup versus 2019's Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. So uh, Tarantino or Dragons? <laughs> Sean? Yeah, I mean, I took my kids to see both of these movies in the theater, and, you know, they thought the Dragon movie was kind of dull, and they just loved the third act of Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. So, Started reenacting it at our right. home and everything. Were your children funny. alive for so How you're, to Train Dragon? Hey, 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 enjoyed stop, a stop dog calling out my shenanigans. <laughs> <laughs> so your children enjoyed a alive. dog mauling out a human being. Um... Yeah, I'd go Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Just the weird Hollywood nostalgia with the odd interp reinterpretation of history and turning it into his own Hollywood fantasy fairy tale. Um, uh, I, I just love all of that. Once Upon a Time, or excuse me, How to Train Your Dragon, great too. But um, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood is what a movie that I was like, that's, I'm glad that this exists. All right. Sean's going with Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Um <coughs> I love both of these movies for completely different reasons, but the first How to Train Your Dragon for me is my least favorite in the trilogy. I absolutely love it, though. But Once Upon a Time in Hollywood stuck with me more, so I'm going to go with that. I love Leo. Brad Pitt's my front runner for support and actor. Love him as Cliff Booth. It talks a lot about the film industry and the Manson murders, and it has an awesome ending with a dog. So Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. And the flame Alyssa? Dogs. Flamethrower. <laughs> Um, flame fur, yeah. yeah. So uh, again, this is one of those weird matchups where they're both very good in their own respective kind of places in their own genres. But I, I think I got to give the edge to Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Um, it's probably one of my favorite Tarantino's, uh, and I just I really love the the '60s setting. Uh, I think that the kind of from a production design side of things, it's great. But then the music, right? The soundtrack is awesome, um, and it's just such an interesting take on you know kind of taking something that was partially real and then just going in uh just an interesting direction with it uh and so it was kind of unexpected but good at the same time uh so once upon a time in hollywood all right another once upon a time uh larry yeah, I think Once Upon a Time is solid, but it's definitely low on my Tarantino list. Uh, meanwhile, I think How to Train Your Dragon and the entire trilogy are like some of the, the best animation of the decade and some of my favorite films. So I vote for How to Train Your Dragon on this one. All right, Larry's going How to Train Your Dragon, but where's the chat on this? The chat is with Quentin Tarantino. Once All right, Once Upon, Once Upon a Time, Time in Hollywood moves on. Our next matchup, though... Speaking oh. of How to Train Your Dragon, <laughs> How to Train Your Dragon 2 2014 versus Creed 2015. This is hard. This is hard, man. I guess I'll start this one off right here. Uh, I'm going to go with uh, How to Train Your Dragon 2. Um, I've seen oh. it the most times. <laughs> I absolutely love Creed. I think it's my favorite in the Rocky franchise. I love how it was so different compared to the other Rocky movies. Focus on uh, ah, 
anyway, How to Train Your Dragon 2 hit me more emotionally. It was my pick for animated future. And, uh, yeah, I got to go with How to Train Your Dragon 2 here. Uh, what about you, Alyssa? It's it's another tough matchup. I, I really enjoy Creed. Um, I wouldn't say it's my favorite in the Rocky franchise, but it it it's really good and, and kind of, extends uh, um, and expands upon themes and stuff from that, those earlier Rocky films. But I, I think I got to go with how, how to train dragon two as well. Um, it, it kind of uh, another good example of expansion on some of the themes and ideas and character development that we see in the, the first film. Uh, so how to train your dragon. All right. How to train your dragon for Alyssa, uh, Larry. Yeah, I'm also going to go with How to Train Your Dragon 2. That sequel is like on I think just disappointed level. Sean. <laughs> it's at <laughs> least on level with the original, oh, no. if not better. It's amazing. Toothless and Hiccup for life. Uh, <laughs> and Creed is very good. I, I loved Creed as well, but yeah, the, the dragons got me. Uh, Sean, we know yeah, Creed. <laughs> <laughs> the biggest Stallone fan. <laughs> I will say Stallone. I'm gonna go with How to Train Your Dragon. Too. No, of course not. I hate dragons. I hate all Drink dragons. In That's dragon what I say movies, that. Burn them so, all. On on the flip side, you have the Rocky franchise, which <laughs> we can all agree is the best franchise. So by default, I've changed all your votes to a vote for Creed. You can thank me now. All right, yeah, Sean went with Creed, but where's the chat on this one? Chat's with Sean. With Creed. They went with Creed. Sorry, yeah. chat and Sean. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so dragons move on. All right, next up, guys, we have 2017's Get Out versus 2018's Avengers Infinity War. Oh. Thanos versus Jordan Peele. Uh, <laughs> let's start with Sean on this one. I think I know where Sean's going with this. I'm going to vote Creed on this one as well. <laughs> uh, just try and correct a mistake that was just made. Um, I'm going to go with Avengers Infinity War. Pretty, actually, I say that as if it was kind of like a casual one. That's my favorite MCU movie. MCU is my favorite franchise of all time. Um, I think it is. I don't know. I just said that as if that's a different thing. I, it's probably maybe it is. Um, so it's a pretty safe for me to go with that one. Get Out's great, too. I wish it was in a different category because it's a fun one to vote for because it's an original film. It's kind of like the Twilight Zone with modern messaging and uh, uh, nope. Oh, uh, I just froze again. Uh, oh, uh, we rearranged. I, <laughs> rearranged. <laughs> I am so confused as to what has just happened to me. <laughs> I have no idea. So Sean went with Infinity War. Um, <laughs> Wait. Can you, hey, Larry, can you high five me real quick? Can we try? And... I think I'm on the, this way. All right. Am I... No, no, nope, you're going the same way. Two, one. Wait. I was like, you're I think you're on the same switch. side. Uh, yeah, you're there, on you the go, there you go. There you go. There you go. All right. So Sean went with Infinity War. Um, and Creed. And Creed. And Creed. Um, here's the thing. I love. Uh, Get out. Uh, Jordan Peele knocked it out of the park. But if you're going against this guy, you're going to lose every time. You're going to get <laughs> snapped with that in nice gauntlet. So, yeah, I'm going Infinity War. This was the 10-year buildup. And, yeah, I'm not an MCU fan. So, I'm just kidding. Infinity War. Uh, Alyssa? Um, both good. This is a tough one. Uh, Infinity War was great. And, like you said, this buildup and kind of leading us to Endgame. Uh, but... I think I gotta go with get out here. It's probably gonna be the only vote it gets, so uh, might as well give it something. But it it's such a uh, an interesting and compelling original story with some really good themes and kind of ways of looking at things, and kicked off Jordan Peele's directorial uh, career, which has continued into you know us this year. And so I I gotta go with get out. No, Thanos didn't snap Alyssa. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Alyssa went with Get Out. Uh, Larry? Well, chat, y'all better start pumping out your votes because I'm also going to vote for Get Out. Um, <laughs> Infinity War left some to be desired for me. There was so much awesome, but then there were some some problems I had, uh, more so than like Endgame or 
the first Avengers, clearly. But yeah, Get Out, I thought, was really subversive, really smart with a fantastic script and some great performances. So I'm going to vote for Get Out. All right, another Get Out. So we got to go to the chat for this one. Well, the chat is very, very clearly going with Infinity War. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> <laughs> our Infinity War moves on. All right, let's, let's go to up. our next matchup, though. Very different matchups, but uh, 2013's Best Picture winner, 12 Years a Slave. Oh, <laughs> it's Sean's face. It's 2011's Drive. Uh, Sean. I missed 12 Years a Slave. Like, I really didn't go to the movies in 2013 because I had a one-year-old and was adjusting to that whole new parenting thing. You mean <laughs> that one-year-old wasn't, like, an appropriate choice to take into 12 years of slave <laughs> for you? <ya? laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, in terms of this, <laughs> I'm going 12 years of slave. Um, only watched it once. Made me ball. Michael Fassbender was really great in it. It brought us Lupita Nyong'o. And Chiwetel Ejiofor is great, and I like Ryan Gosling. He's cool. He has a nice jacket, but I gotta go twelve years. <laughs> <laughs> Alyssa, yeah, I think I gotta go twelve years of slave as well. It's one of those movies I've also only seen it once, and that is definitely more than enough times, I think, for me. But it was a fantastic movie. It's just one of those ones that, like, it's not an enjoyable watch uh, by any means, but it's such a good movie. <laughs> Um, drive, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of mixed on drive, whether or not I really like it. There are aspects that I like other aspects, not so much. Um, so 12 years yeah. slave. All right. And Larry. Yeah. I love drive. I think it's pretty awesome, but 12 years of slave is such a, I don't know, a visceral experience. Mm -hmm. Um, pretty akin to something like Shawshank Redemption is just really well made, really brutally made um, by Steve McQueen, but it's like a masterclass to me in so many different ways. So 12 Years a Slave. All right, we picked 12 Years a Slave. What is the chat pick? Drive by one vote. Wow, Drive. It loves some Ryan Gosling, but not good enough to beat slaves. Um, oh. Sorry about that. Uh, 12 Years a Slave. I meant the movie. Moves on. And then, <laughs> Such poorly timed wording. Uh, uh, all right. Let's, let's go to the next matchup now. Let's this go. Is another very weird... Uh, oh, okay. Another Woo. weird choice. 2016 Zootopia versus 2017's Three Billboards Outside Evan, Missouri. Uh, let's start with Alyssa. Again, two very, very different movies. Um, <clears throat> I I enjoy both of them a lot, but I think I got to give it to Zootopia. Um, it's uh, very uh, fun. It's one of my favorites of the kind of newer. Oh, now Alyssa be freezing. Oh, Alyssa's freezing now. Hmm. Well, hmm. we know uh, she Larry? went Zootopia. <laughs> oh, she went um, Zootopia, Larry. And uh, oh, there she is. Am I back? You're back. Yeah, you're back. <laughs> you went with Zootopia. Yeah. yeah, we'll just, I'll just, yeah, Zootopia. Yeah, Zootopia three, for Alyssa. Larry? Three Billboards is another one of those ones that I have some some issues with off to the side, whereas Zootopia, I think, is pretty, pretty great uh, across the board. So I'm going to vote Zootopia. All right, two for Zootopia. Sean? <coughs> yeah, I'm going to go Zootopia. Um, so many great memories watching that one with my kids. Yeah. Uh, I'm also going to go with Zootopia. I love Three Billboards. Sam Rockwell is great. Um, but in terms of rewatchability, i got to go Zootopia. Uh, what about the chat? The chat brought up the DMV scene, and they're going with Zootopia. All right, Zootopia wipes the door clean on this one. Um, so, guys, let's go to our next matchup here. That is 2016 Sing Street oh. versus 2014's Guardians of the Galaxy. All right, let's start with Larry. Um, I'm going to go with Guardians of the Galaxy. I do really enjoy Sing Street. I think it has some great music. How Drive It Like You Stole It wasn't nominated for Best Original Song. I will never know. Um, and it has a lot of heart to it, but Guardians was just 
really well crafted and a whole lot of fun. All right, Larry's going with Guardians. Uh, Sean, I'm going to Guardians of the Galaxy. One of my favorite um, MCU films. Such a pleasant surprise with such a fresh sense of humor. Uh, <laughs> multiple star making performances inside Bless of you. it. Um, where a wrestler and a TV comedic actor suddenly became action stars. Guardians of the Galaxy. All right, Sean going with Guardians. I'm also going to go with Guardians of the Galaxy. I love Sing Street. I think that's a really underrated movie. Um, but I've only seen it once. And I think Guardians has a special place for me in terms of MCU movies. Like, nobody expected that movie to be as good as it was, as great characters. Yeah, Guardians. Alyssa? I'm going to echo everything you guys said. Uh, Guardians of the Galaxy is one of my favorite MCU movies. Uh, very funny, very interesting combination of characters. Uh, has an awesome soundtrack. Um, but Sing Street's great, too. Um, and definitely underrated, uh, like like Ryan said. So if you haven't seen Sing Street, definitely watch it. Uh, also some good music in that, but got to go with Guardians. Yeah, drive it like you stole it. Really great song. But uh, Guardians of the Galaxy comes up on top. Uga Chaga is the chat going to Uga Chaga as well. They sure are, and then some. Come and get your love. <laughs> All right, let's move on to our next matchup. Uh, we got 2018's Mission Impossible Fallout versus 2012's Zero Dark Thirty. Um, Tom Cruise versus Catherine Bigelow. Uh, Sean? Mm, I'll go with um, Mission Impossible Fallout. Zero Dark Thirty is a movie that, once again, a cool experience watching it once. I've never wanted to go back and rewatch it. Whereas Mission Impossible Fallout took a franchise that was over 20 years old and built on top of it, brought some of the mythology and a bunch of the films together, and still provided interesting new action sequences. All right, Sean going with Fallout, and I'm echoing everything Sean said. I'm going Fallout. It's my favorite film last year. I took the franchise on a whole high level with helicopters and Henry Cavill's mustache. Um, I like Zero Dark Thirty. It's a really great movie. I think it's better than Argo. I love uh, Jessica Chastain in it. I love Catherine Bigelow's direction, just the realism to that movie. But Fallout felt more real to me with the action. Just some of the best stunt work ever. So fall out. Uh, Alyssa? Um, yeah, so I, I like Zero Dark Thirty, but definitely no contest here. Fallout. Um, <laughs> it's probably my favorite in the Mission Impossible franchise. Um, excellent action and just an all-around very entertaining and fun and rewatchable movie. All right, Fallout for Alyssa. Larry? Yeah, thank you, Zero Dark Thirty, for giving us our female director to win Best <laughs> Director. Um, but uh, it's a strong strong film overall, constructed well, but I, I'll also vote for Mission Impossible Fallout. Henry Cavill just killed it in this movie for me, as did our entire cast. One of the best action films of the decade. Yeah, bathroom brawl it out for Fallout for us, and what about the uh, chat? Uh, there's a lot of people that say they haven't seen Zero Dark Thirty, but most, watch it. Most, watch it. Most are saying follow. All right, Tom Cruise comes away once again, wow. the charm of the audience, and so Fallout moves on. And our next matchup here, two completely different movies, but I think this will be a sweep: 2018's Roma versus 2012's The Avengers. So I'll start this one off easy for me, The Avengers. Um, my favorite movie of 2012. Not just saying this because I'm an MCU fanboy here. Um, I felt Roma was a little boring at times. I couldn't get through the whole movie much. I had to pause it because it's a Netflix movie. But Bonzo Coran had a cool vision to the film. It's well shot. The cinematography is great. The characters are interesting. It talks a lot about upper middle class as well. And for some people, they could also find it a bit boring at times. But Avengers just accomplished something that we didn't think it would, bringing together iconic heroes. And Joss Whedon nailed it. The Avengers. What else can I say? Uh, Alyssa. So... Roma is one of those ones, like for me, like the lighthouse where the technical aspects are fantastic. Uh, you brought up the cinematography. It's definitely my favorite uh, cinematography, I think, last year. Um, but the story side of things just wasn't there for me. I really like uh, Alfonso Cuaron. Um, he has a lot of great movies. Um, 
you know, children and men, uh, itu mama tambien, but uh, I, I, got, I got to go with Avengers here as well. It's not my favorite in the MCU. Um, it's kind of, I, I like what it did um, in terms of being able to have this whole, you know, the whole team come together. But um, I got to go Avengers here um, just because it's a much more enjoyable movie for me. All right, Alyssa going with Avengers. And what about you, Sean? Avengers, it's a movie that changed the genre. It was already like an established genre that had been around for a while. And then it comes along. Suddenly, team-up movies are the thing you have to do. They established the template. even changed the direction of the nature of the MCU, where you look at phase one, and they weren't all joke, joke. Every line is a quip. And that changed after uh, Avengers. So, Avengers. All right. Avengers, Rashawn. Larry? Yeah, Roma was actually in my top 10 for last year. I do, I thought it was just gorgeous and <laughs> some really harrowing stuff in there, some really deep stuff. But The Avengers is still arguably my favorite Marvel film. I just think it is really fun. I love the scope. And like you said, it changed, it changed the game. It changed Hollywood across the board they like changed mm -hmm. movies um so i'm gonna go with the avengers like even when they went to go make the dark universe like yeah. about these monsters <laughs> and they tried to do it as yeah. a shared universe that was quippy every other line was a quip like they literally tried to take the avengers yeah. and do monsters movies <laughs> with it that's influence yes all right and uh what's the chat going with i'm sure avengers definitely going with the avengers avengers comes out on top all right, our next matchup, guys, is uh, 2014's Boyhood versus 2010's The Fighter. Linklater versus Christian Bale. Uh, let's start with Larry. Uh, so this is where I get to say I appreciated what Richard Linklater did as a filmmaker. Great. Uh, doing that 12 years of filming to get this movie to where it was was wonderful. I just didn't really connect with the story being told. I didn't connect with these characters at all. Whereas the fighter, I did connect with the story that was being told. Um, and I just think it was a, a really a more visceral, emotional experience as well as just visceral as a film itself. So I'm going to vote for the fighter. All right. Larry votes for the fighter. What about you, Sean? Yeah, the fighter recurring theme here this is very much my type of film the sorts of uh dynamics and families tied to sports movies where the fight in the ring is a metaphor for the fight inside the people i love all of that stuff and a bunch of actors and actresses that i love so just a whole like this is just teeing off for me for the type of movie to, to get me to love it all right yeah i'm also gonna go with the fighter i love christian bale and mark Wahlberg in that movie uh, Boyhood is one of those movies that felt a little overpraised when I watched it. I love watching a journey of a boy grow up into a man that took 12 years to make. Um, but I have not seen that movie since. And so The Fighter has more of an impact. What about you, Alyssa? Um, so I think <clears throat> probably The Fighter for me as well. Um, though I do like Boyhood, but um, it's definitely I, the story isn't isn't there for me as much. Uh, this kind of reminds me of, we were talking about Birdman before, how it's kind of more the gimmick that uh, is the, the big drawing factor for me to it. I think it's really um, an, an awesome feat that they, they did in filming this over such a long period of time. But from a story perspective, probably the fighter. All right, Alyssa's going with the fighter. What's the chat going with? Um, not too many people have seen either one of these movies, but for the votes that I did accumulate, The Fighter. All right, The Fighter punches its way through to the next round. And speaking of our last matchup in terms of these movies, and for this bracket of round one, it's going to be the runtime this live stream is taking. <laughs> next, we got the 2019's The Irishman, the three and a half hour long Netflix movie, versus 2016's Captain America Civil War. A war going on between Martin Scorsese and Marvel. Yeah, perfect matchup. <laughs> All right. Sean, let's start with you. Um. I mean, I can appreciate what The Irishman was going for. Very good movie. Does a lot of things great. 
Um, I just don't know that I think it needed to be as long as it was. And Captain America Civil War is an MCU movie. Captain America <laughs> Civil War is my vote. Uh, uh, yeah. Martin Scorsese took on Marvel, and I'm going to go with Marvel. It's that All right. simple. Yeah, so I love The Irishman, one of my favorite movies of the year. It did not need to be as long as it did, but De Niro, Pacino, Pesci, all fantastic. But Civil War, I've seen it 20-plus times. I love some airport battle and some uh, water trucks. So I'm going with Civil War. Uh, Alyssa? Um, so I think I'm probably going to go with Civil War here as well. Um, the Irishman... Um, in terms of it's as a movie, I think it's probably the better crafted movie. Um, but in terms of rewatch and kind of enjoyability, I like Civil War more. Irishman's just not really my favorite genre. Um, no. But that being said, I, it's one of the better for me in that genre. So I really did enjoy it, but Civil War. All right. Civil War for Alyssa. And uh, what about you, Larry? Yeah, the last act of The Irishman is really what saves the whole film for me um, because that's something new and that's the only part of the film that felt kind of like fresh. It felt like we were doing something with the mobster genre. Of course, the performances are great. Martin Scorsese, I mean, I don't know that he knows how to direct poorly <laughs> or make yeah. a, a poorly executed film. It just, those first two acts, they felt meandering to the point where yeah. I didn't feel like I was getting anything. I agree, actually. Actually, characters yeah. or the story we were kind of just there uh civil war i love i think it's pretty fantastic i know people complain about things like lack of villain uh basically but i think that it actually works great um and i love the the inter turmoil story for me it was bvs done right dc fans don't come for me um yeah so i'm gonna vote for civil war I feel like once Pacino comes in, then you're really into it. Pacino! <laughs> um, what's the chat saying? Uh, definitely Captain America Civil War is the favorite. Sorry, Scorsese. It's cinema. Um, so Civil War moves on to the next round. Beating Scorsese. All right, so that concludes round one of this final bracket. What's the round two matchup? Right, Very quickly. So for the rest of this bracket, we're just going to say the movie yeah. that we will. Yeah, right. don't go in depth. Just say your pick. So we can just. All right, we have Parasite versus The Force Awakens. Oh. All right, Alyssa. Uh, Parasite. Parasite. Uh, Larry. Um. Parasite. Parasite for Larry, Sean. I'll go Parasite here. Parasite? To make I'll up for my last round. <laughs> I'm not voting for it. Yeah, I've seen Parasite once, so I'll go Force Awakens. Okay. Uh, the chat? The tough one. Uh, it's just now catching up. Force Awakens, Force Awakens, Parasite, Parasite, Parasite. Oh, it doesn't really matter because Parasite won. All right. All right, so Parasite moves on. Nice. All right, we have Once Upon a Time in Hollywood versus. Wow, the tension. Yeah. Wow, that was a cliffhanger right there. Yeah, this is leaving me hanging like this. Time to eat some soup. Just give it a sec. Oh, he's okay. back. Maybe. Hey, Ryan. Help. Wow, the tension. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we're back. We're back. Larry? <laughs> um, okay, wait. What was the second one? We never heard. Uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood and How to Train Your Dragon 2. Oh, How to Train Your Dragon 2. How to Train Your Dragon 2. Yes. Yeah, uh, Sean? Skull Crushers. Skull Crushers. Once Upon uh, a Time in Hollywood. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Um, I'm going with uh, Dragons, How to Train Your Dragon 2. Uh, Alyssa? Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. What's the chat saying? Dragons or Hollywood? What are we? Is it a tie between all of you? Yeah. Yep, yeah. it's a tie. Once Upon a Time, Dragon 2, Dragon 2, Hollywood, Hollywood. Divisive! Two, wow. 3, Hollywood. Oh. I like dragons. Oh my gosh. It's I like, like dragon. 
It like keeps going back and forth. <laughs> once upon a time. I think How to Train Your Dragon. Dragon. Dragon I also think it's Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. That's I think it's Hollywood. Thing. No, I see more dragons. I see more Hollywood. I was like, I don't know. It seems like pretty like eight and nine, nine and eight. I don't know. What's Larry saying? What, I didn't hear what, what did he say? No, I didn't hear no, what Larry no, said. I, I, Larry was changing no, his vote. Saying? Nine, eight, eight, nine to what? In favor no, of no, no. I was saying it seems like pretty close. <laughs> I think it's dragons. Yeah. Dragon, D2, dragon, dragon. Don't turn dragon. All right. How to train your dragon two moves on. Who's up in here renaming it Wood? All right, what's Hollywood. next? We have Avengers Infinity War versus 12 Years a Slave. Uh, easy for me going Infinity War. Alyssa? Infinity War. Uh, Infinity War. Larry? Uh, 12 Years a Slave. 12 Years a Slave. Sean? Hasn't seen in 12 Years a Slave. Oh, yeah, he hasn't seen 12 Years a Slave. Perfect. What's the chat saying? <laughs> what's Larry say? Yeah. What does Larry say? Larry said uh, 12 Years a Slave. Uh, so it's two to one. Infinity War. Infinity we? War, Infinity War, Infinity War, Infinity War, Infinity War. Yeah. Infinity War, Infinity War moves on. All right, so what's our next match? Zootopia versus Guardians of the Galaxy. Oh. All right, Sean, we'll start with you. Guardians of the Galaxy. Guardians of the Galaxy. Um, I'm also going to go with Guardians of the Galaxy. What about you, Alyssa? Oh, this is like a complete toss up for me. So I'll say Zootopia, but I love, love, love Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah. All right. Zootopia for Alyssa. Larry? Um, looks like we're sending it back to the chat. I'll vote for Zootopia as well. All right. Chat, chat. <laughs> Guardians, Zootopia, Guardians, 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 Zootopia. Guardians, 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 Guardians. Guardians of the Galaxy Guardians. moves on. All right. Uh, last matchup or two let's... more. Mission Impossible Fallout versus the Avengers. All right, we'll start with Alyssa here. Uh, Fallout. Fallout. Uh, Larry? Uh, the Avengers. Avengers. Sean? Avengers. Avengers. Oh. Fallout for me. Jeez. Oh, here we go. All right, so now let's go to the chat. <laughs> we love getting the chat involved. Yeah. In here. yeah. That's why we asked y'all to Fallout. 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 Yeah. Avengers, 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 Tom Avengers, Cruise Avengers, on a Avengers, helicopter. Avengers, uh, Avengers. Avengers. There's a couple fallouts in there, but Avengers. Avengers. <laughs> Avengers. Avengers moves on. All right, and the final matchup? We have the Fighter one? versus Captain America Civil War. All right, we'll start with Larry. Uh, Captain America Civil War. Civil War, Sean. Civil War. Civil War. Civil War for me, Alyssa. Civil War. Civil War for us in the chat. <laughs> sure, <laughs> Civil War. Civil War. <laughs> the, the fighter! The fighter! <laughs> they moved on to All right, we are moving All on. Right. We have six Civil movies War. left. Parasite. Uh-oh. The suspense oh, again. again. <laughs> the suspense <Wow>. again. <laughs> so what kind of soup you got there, Sean? <laughs> so we've got hot and sour soup <laughs> that was delivered about 20 minutes ago. Oh, okay. And then I have beef with broccoli and rice. Oh. And my daughter, who wasn't wearing any clothes, almost walked on camera <laughs> to deliver it. Like, oh. whoa! Oh, no! <laughs> Don't do that! Don't do that! <laughs> Ryan's page might get taken down. Um. <laughs> no, don't ruin his channel. <laughs> oh. Oh, no. Uh -oh. That's, not That's not a good sign. I was like, that was uh, the worst sign of all here. It's like we're rearranging again, but I don't know about this rearrangement. Got to keep it going for him. I know. Because apparently they can hear us at some point yeah. if... If that last one was there. Yeah, see, they're commenting food review. Yeah, so, so Cody there. O'Toole is still commenting. So they mm -hmm. weren't blipped out of existence. That's cool. Cool. That's good. Personal. <laughs> hmm. Oh, Steve O. <laughs> I 
like that we have complementing color schemes going, Sean. Yep, yep. <laughs> and the way we're positioned right now, there's like an arc <laughs> in the height. There's a, there's a lot of solid things happening with this arrangement. Hey! hey. Back. <laughs> Chat hates us. The stream hates us. I don't know. Where are we at? Sorry, guys. We know it's uh, Parasite okay. versus something. Um, Parasite versus... Parasite versus How to Train Your Dragon 2. Okay. All right, we'll start with uh, Sean here. Um, we'll go Parasite on this one because I hate right. dragons. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll go Parasite. Why not? Um, Alyssa? Parasite. Parasite. Larry? I'm staying true with my Targaryen blood. I'm going to vote for How to Train Your Dragon 2. <laughs> How to Train Your Dragon 2. So... Chat, what's where are you at? What's the you're not telling me who's voting for what? Oh, uh, Larry, Larry voted for dragons. Uh, Lissa yeah. voted for um, parasite. parasite, parasite. Sean voted for parasite, and you and I voted for parasite. Okay, so, so where's the chat at? Um, it's very, mixed. I see a lot of dragons, it's mixed though, but yeah. parasite moves on. Started parasite, parasite moves on. Woo. All right, what's next, Cody? Guardians of the Galaxy versus the Avengers. All right. Uh, I'll start this one off. Um, I'm going to go with uh, the Avengers. Uh, Alyssa? Uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, Larry? Uh, the Avengers. The Avengers and Sean. This one's brutal. I got to go. I got to go the Avengers. The Avengers. All right. Where's the chat at? <laughs> Somebody straight up said anything oh, no. but Paris. They're mad at us. <laughs> Avengers, 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 Guardians, Guardians, Avengers, Guardians, Avengers, Guardians, Gar very mixed. But yeah. Avengers moves on. All right, we have Captain America Civil War versus Avengers Infinity War. Or MCU battles. I'm going with Infinity War. Alyssa? Infinity War. Infinity War. Larry? Uh, Civil War. Civil War. Sean? Infinity War. Infinity War. The chat. We'll let it load. <clears throat> Star Lord. Um, Infinity War. Cap. Civil War. Infinity War. Infinity War. Infinity War. Infinity War. Infinity Infinity War. Infinity War. On. So now our number one seed is going to come in. Our number one seed is our number one seed is Moonlight. Yeah, Moonlight. I was like, what was it again? <laughs> <laughs> Moonlight. All right. So, what's our first matchup? Moonlight versus Parasite. All right. Let's start with uh, Larry. Uh, Moonlight. Moonlight for Larry. Uh, Sean. Parasite. Parasite. I'm going Parasite. Uh, Alyssa. Parasite. Parasite, the chat. We'll see what the chat says here. Um, thank you guys for sticking with us. Thank we you guys so it. much. We've gone longer Sorry, than bro. the Irishmen, which is what I not wanted. But it's great <laughs> to talk with you guys. I love the entertainment value that's going on here. Uh, Majority is Parasite, for sure. <clears throat> the Parasite moves on. We have another uh, MCU matchup. We have Avengers versus Avengers Infinity War. All right, Battle of the Avengers. Sean, let's start with you. Infinity War. Infinity War. I'm also going with Thanos, Infinity War. Uh, Alyssa? Infinity War. Infinity War and Larry? Avengers. Avengers. <laughs> Chat, Thanos, or Loki? Mm -hmm. um, let's see. Infinity, Infinity War, War Infinity, Infinity War. War. Infinity, Infinity. Infinity, Infinity. Infinity War, Ultron. <laughs> Infinity oh. War wins. Oh. We have our final two. Parasite versus <laughs> Avengers Infinity War. All right. I'll start this one off. Uh, I'm going to go with Infinity War. Uh, Alyssa? Um, probably the only vote for it, but Parasite. Parasite. Uh, Larry? Parasite. Parasite. Uh, Sean? Was it Infinity War or Parasite? Yeah. Infinity War. <laughs> Infinity War. So, chat, 
Thanos or <laughs> Bong Joon Ho's Parasite. Parasite, Infinity War, Infinity War, Infinity War, Infinity War, Parasite, Infinity War, Infinity. It Infinity. is Infinity. Parasite. We love you, but Infinity War is our last film that will be going Ooh. to the championship round. So our four films that are going to be battling out here to find out what the best film of the decade is is Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, Whiplash. Whiplash Inception. Inception and Avengers Infinity War. These are the films we and us picked together. Science. science. Us. Science. Yeah. Yes, science. These All are right. our best. We don't make let's, the rules. We, we don't make them. All right, so let's start with our first matchup. What's that, Cody? First matchup, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes versus Whiplash. Oh. Uh, Alyssa, we'll start with you. Well, should be no <laughs> surprise at this point. <laughs> Whiplash. <laughs> Whiplash. Uh, Larry, drums or apes? Uh, it's actually a really tough one for me. I'm, uh, I'm going to vote for Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. It well, goes with the apes. apes. All right. One for Dawn, one for Whiplash. Sean? As an animal lover that doesn't want to support abusive teachers, <laughs> oh I'm going to go with Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. <laughs> Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. Wow. Wow. I'm going with Whiplash, of course. Whiplash. Okay, Love here we you, go. Dawn. We're Good hearing what you two are saying loud and clear. I think All Whiplash right. is winning. <laughs> All right. Let's go. I think Whiplash. Uh, whiplash. Whiplash. Dawn. Whiplash. 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 Whip. 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 <laughs> Dawn. Whip. 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 Whip and Nay Nay. Whip, whip, whip and Nay Nay. <laughs> it is whip. Whiplash comes out on top and moves to the finals. <laughs> and our last matchup, Inception really versus bad. Infinity War. Inception versus Infinity War. Larry. Uh, Inception. Inception for Larry. Sean. I think I'm going Inception. Inception. I'm sorry, Infinity War. Inception's the better movie. Ooh. Inception. Uh, Alyssa. Inception. Yeah. Inception. Ooh. The chat. Oh. What does the chat think, though? Uh, I see. Even though it doesn't matter. They're voting for Whiplash on this one. You know Thanos what? wins. No, I see more. Scooby Doo two wins. Uh, it's mixed. It's mixed. But Inception. It's like I think Infinity War came on hard okay. late, but all of this. Three and a half hours. Woo! Three, and, three hours and forty Your minutes. Whole of this, life this, has this led to this moment. moment. This is longer than it, an uh, Irishman. But uh, so, Cody, what is the final matchup? This determines what the best film of the decade is, in our opinions. Inception versus Whiplash. All right, we're gonna start with ladies first. Alyssa. We're still doing one-word answers here. It's the final. I mean, it's the final. You can do what you want. Um, <laughs> so I, uh, I love both of these movies, um, but I, God, it's so hard. I, I got to go with Inception here. Um, Nolan is just great, uh, and I, yeah, Inception. All right, first vote for Inception for Alyssa, Larry. Yeah, I think. I think film Twitter and the film world would be very happy with the two that we dwindled this all down to amongst all the noise. Yeah. I think generally people would, would be pretty pleased with this. Um, Whiplash is such a like intense viewing experience, but I'm going to have to vote for Inception. It just built this insane world. Christopher Nolan crafted a really intelligent, moving action epic that was a completely original story and it really set the bar high for the 2010s when it came to high concept blockbusters um so i i vote for inception all right two votes for inception sean gonna agree with uh Alyssa and larry and go with warrior <laughs> <laughs> and creed oh. as creed as well um <laughs> i'll go to inception Wow, guys, I'm different on you. I think Whiplash <laughs> is the best film of the decade, easily for me. Uh, top five favorite movies of all time is Whiplash. But Inception's absolutely incredible, and it doesn't really matter because Inception's the favorite. Uh, but what is the chat saying? It's very mixed. Uh, I'm seeing a lot of both. I mean, I love it's. It's really hard to decide. But we have a winner. 
Inception. The best film of the decade, according to us, is Inception. <laughs> the only people that matter are right here in this chat and on this stream. Inception. Boom. Sorry. Um, so there you have it, guys. We picked, we decided as a community what the best film of the decade is, and Inception wins. Thank you guys so much for participating in this. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm yeah. sorry it took almost four hours to decide this, but <laughs> regardless, it was fun and entertaining to talk about movies with you guys. And thank you so much to all three of my guests that came today. You guys are all fantastic. Please go check out their social media links. They're in the description, but we're going to give them a chance to shout out their social media pages right now and thank them for participating. So starting with Alyssa, where can people find you? Um, so you can find me here on YouTube. I've got a movie review channel, mainly movies. Um, so I know you guys can see it there, but it's Maine as in the state of Maine. So mainly with an E in there. Um, but I'm on YouTube, uh, but I'm on Twitter, um, Instagram, Facebook, all the social medias. Um, so yeah, come, come see my stuff. <laughs> yes, definitely go check out her channel, guys. And uh, Larry. Yeah, so you can find me here on YouTube as well as Instagram and over on Twitter, all at the handle LC Screen Talk, and lots of fun uh, rankings going on over there, lists, end of the decade, all that fun jazz. So come on over, say hi. All right, Larry, great channel. Please go check out Larry and Sean. You can find me on the YouTube. If you type in Sean Chandler, you either find a football player in his 20s or a guy that looks like me <laughs> that talks about movies it's the one that looks like me and is talking about movies and uh yeah um just love to talk movies too much and i should have a podcast i'm launching in about a month so uh that's pretty exciting yes please guys go check out their channels all their channel links are in the description below Thank you guys so much for tuning in to this almost four-hour live stream. If you didn't stay long, that's totally fine and understandable. We all have lives here. But still, thank you guys so much. Let me know down below in the comment section what your guys' favorite film of the decade is. If we missed one, I'm sure. Check out the honorable mentions that weren't on this list. You may be enraged in the comments. Like, why wasn't this in here? What the hell? You can check it out down there. But seriously, guys, we're tired. Thank you guys so much for watching <laughs> this live stream. And if you guys liked it, please be sure to give it a thumbs up on your way out. Be sure to subscribe if you're new for more content and subscribe to these guys. And, uh, yeah, the year's almost over. Happy New Year to everybody. And we'll see you in the next video. Bye. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.